Do you think that podcasts are going to become a big thing or no? <laughs> Coming to you from ACL Give it up for Tony Hinchcliffe! Ten fucking years, who's ready to party? To see you guys go to this is fucking amazing. This is incredible. Congratulations, Tony, on having one of the most creative shows in the entire world. And it is so much fun. This is the Tony Hinchcliffe Pilot Podcast, so this is when you figure out what you want this to be. I have to decide right now? No. I, oh. By next Monday. By next Monday. At oh, okay. At 8 p.m. Cool. I gotcha. So you guys might witness history at some point. Coming to you live from the Comedy Mothership here in Austin, Texas, for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony X Clan! Are you guys ready to have the best fucking night of your lives tonight or what? <laughs> Make some noise for Red Band, everybody. Hey, everybody! Yeah! Nine years and three weeks we've been doing this show together. This is the number one live podcast in the world. Kill Tony. Sounds a little bit tinny. We can fix that. Mm. Uh, how we feeling, everybody? You guys excited? Yeah. You're here. Brought to you by the Red Rose, the Yellow Rose, Austin Security Guard Service, Gel Blaster, and Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey, which presents the best damn band in the land, everybody. You've heard them for a few minutes here. That's the Kill Tony band. The great Michael Gonzalez on the drums. Paul Deemer on the horns, right there. This is Matt Muling on the electric guitar. John Dees, the leader of the band on the keys. And this is the great D Madness, right over my shoulder here on the bass guitar. An undeniable force of nature. And before we start tonight's show, here's a little bit more from the amazing sponsors that made tonight's episode available for you here right now. Hey, y'all, it's official. It's announced. It's out there. My largest stand-up tour of my entire life. All the biggest theaters in all my favorite cities. Toronto, Canada. Royal Oak, Michigan. San Antonio, Texas. Chicago, Illinois. Charlotte, North Carolina. Atlanta, Georgia. Columbus, Ohio. Kansas City, Missouri. Indianapolis, Indiana. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Tyson's, Virginia, just outside of D.C. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Minneapolis, Minnesota. E Youngstown, Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio, San Francisco, California, Sacramento, California, San Diego, California, Phoenix, Arizona, New York, New York, Clearwater, Florida, and Jacksonville, Florida. Tickets available at TonyHinchcliffe.com. Come see the crazy Texas fucking stand-up that I've been working on. You're not going to believe it. Let's have some fun. <laughs> Hey, 
y'all. One of my favorite things about getting a box of awesome from Bespoke Post every month is how it sneaks up on you. You forget that it's coming, and then one day, boom, on your front door, the best box you'll open all month, filled with carefully chosen gear from the best small brands around the world. I'll tell you what I got this month. It is the Forge. This Damascus steel knife is made by Buck and Bear Knives located in Pennsylvania, which is the next door neighbor of me and Red Band's former home of Ohio. Red Band, what'd you get? Oh man, I got another knife. I love my new knife collection. I got the Terra. The knife in the Terra box is made by Bare Bones, based in Salt Lake City. Yeah. No matter what you have going on this spring, Box of Awesome has you covered. From camping gear essentials, cookout must-haves, and drink game upgrades. Box of Awesome has collections for every part of your life. To get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. Each box is valued at around $70, but you only pay a fraction of that price. Plus, with each Box of Awesome, you're supporting small businesses. 90% of everything that comes in your Box of Awesome is from a small up-and-coming brand. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel anytime. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code KILLTONY at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code KILLTONY for 20% off your first box. boxofawesome.com, code KILLTONY. Hey, y'all. Now that it's summer, you might be looking for wholesome, convenient meals for sunny, active days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with flavorful and nutritious ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track reaching your goals. I absolutely love this stuff. I actually, you know, when I get home sometimes very late at night, 3, 4 in the morning, I like to eat, but I don't want to eat something sloppy that's going to make me sluggish this you can eat clean and everything's great red band you know all about that. oh yeah i'm a subscriber and it has saved my butt many times because too busy with summer plans to cook but want to make sure you're eating well with factors skip the trip to the grocery store and skip the chopping prepping and cleaning too while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need factors fresh never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes so all you have to do is heat and enjoy then get back outside and soak up that warm weather looking for calorie conscious options this summer try delicious dietitian approved calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving need an extra boost to support your wellness goals this summer try protein plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving elevate eating at home with our new upscale surf and turf and surf and surf meal options like roasted garlic filet mignon and shrimp and cajun spice shrimp and salmon yum 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 and let me tell you what's crazy about these things is when you come home you're drunk whatever you're starving. Everything is ready in just two minutes. So head to factormeals.com slash killtony50 and use code killtony50 to get 50% off your first box. That's code killtony50 at factormeals.com slash killtony50 to get 50% off your first box. Hey, y'all. Sometimes we all get down. Your life can be affected by exterior or interior forces and you might realize that it helps to talk to a therapist and you don't know where to get started. Well, Talkspace makes it easy to find a therapist that you will like. It's convenient to meet online, at home, or wherever you're most comfortable. Talkspace has made a huge difference in many people's lives. It's accessible and affordable. Do you think seeing a therapist or psychiatrist would be helpful, but you don't have the time to actually find one and meet with them or afford them? Try Talkspace. By doing everything online, Talkspace has made getting the help you want easy, accessible, and affordable. And Talkspace takes most insurance. So why wait? Sometimes people wait until something bad happens to talk to a therapist, but you don't have to. It's easy to find a good therapist right now through Talkspace. Therapy can be a guiding light. It can help you shift your perspective and find tools to cope in difficult times. No need to wait. Talkspace makes it easy to get started and affordable. Red Band. At Talkspace.com, you can sign up online and get a personalized match with a therapist who's right for you, typically within 48 hours. It's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions with your licensed therapist from the comfort of your home. Talkspace lets you send messages to your therapist anytime and then reply so you don't have to wait for your next session. If your plan covers Talkspace, you will only pay a copay, typically around $25. And as a list 
listener of this podcast, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace. When you go to Talkspace.com slash Tony to match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash Tony to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's Talkspace.com slash Tony. You guys ready to start tonight's episode? You guys can do better. Are you ready to start tonight's fucking show or what? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is so special to me because this guy changed my fucking life well over a decade ago. I uh, knew that I had the ability, an uncanny ability, to write roast jokes. And uh, this guy and I worked together to make so many unbelievable things happen. One of my best friends, one of the greatest mentors I've ever had in my life, and one of the greatest guests in Kill Tony history. Let's show him some love. Austin, Texas, make some fucking noise for the Roastmaster General, Jeffrey Ross. The fucking noise, people! Yes! Woo! It is true. I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> that was a lot of energy. That was so, so overwhelming to have such a nice welcome in Austin here at the Mothership. Killed Tony. This is amazing. Thank you. We're going to have so much goddamn fun. I hope there's good... Sec- your sponsor is your security? One of our sponsors is the Austin Security Guard Service, which, by the way, is the best security guard service in the world. You in hope the- so. <laughs> it sounds like a fucking long-term hit job to me. These guys are... The show is called Kill Tony. <laughs> there's one of them right point, there. Actually. Look at this guy. You want to fuck with that guy? Yeah. He's got a beard. Know. He doesn't even know how to (laughs) smile. Look at him. (laughs) Oh, he just did gang signs. All right. He looks like special ed forces. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I do believe it's his first night on the job here, too. So welcome. welcome. Mine, too. Let's get to it, Tony. This looks fucking fun. I love coming here. I love Tony picked me. me, Yoni picked me up at the airport. Tony has like his whole like fucking crew now. Yeah. I have an entourage, a production team. And I wanted to come down uh, for Roast Battle last night, which was fucking amazing. Comics flew in from all over the country to Roast Battle each other last night, and I was one of the judges, and and I was like, I told Tony I was coming down. He said, come down, stick around, and be on Kill Tony with me. And it's almost his 10th year anniversary, so I couldn't resist checking in. It's amazing. This guy and I, he got me in the writer's room on all the roasts, and I used to leave. Everyone would work at, you know, it's kind of like an 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. job for a few weeks. And I was the only one that would leave every Monday at, like, 7. And everybody was, like, kind of like, what the fuck's this guy doing? Everybody wanted to go home, but I was leaving to go do a dinky little show in the belly room of the comedy store. And now here we are. So, very exciting. Jeff, you've been a guest multiple times. You know how it works. This bucket is absolutely filled with names. Look at that. It's absolutely ridiculously incredible. Over 200 people signed up. They are all stocked on top of one another. I saw them outside in the alley. Yeah, it is a debacle out there. I thought it was a refugee camp. (laughs) Tony said, "That's that's my people. They're all trying to get on the show. Yeah. It's wild out there. People well, are uh, making hamburgers on makeshift grills. They're fighting. They're making friends. Everything's so, happening. Sounds like uh, <laughs> like you're a sports team. Like they're, what do they call it? Tailgating. They're tailgating. Yes, tailgating. Sorry. Yes. I don't know. I smoke some of your weed too, Tony. Yeah. It's Tony has this ritual. <laughs> like he picks me up, takes me to yoga, right? So no one has ever gone to yoga in a Corvette before, right? <laughs> Stone to the gills. We pass a mural of Tony, like, right? Everywhere I go, Tony, Tony, Tony. I thought fucking I was meeting the band Tony, Tony, Tony. 
Everybody knows Tony, right? It's crazy. And then, uh, and then, uh, we had know. steaks the other night too. We had steak. By I took the leftovers. It's probably still in the trunk of your Corvette. By I, the way. I ate them. I ate everything that <laughs> night. All right, good. All those sides, the um, au gratin potatoes and the crab fried rice. And then Tony, he's he's doing so well just for the fuck of it. Last night he he lit a homeless guy on fire. Yeah, <laughs> one of my favorite runs things this to fucking do. town. One of my favorite things to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. If I can't roast him one way, I'll roast him the other. You know what I mean? (laughs) So if I pull a name out of the bucket, a comedian gets 60 seconds to do uninterrupted stage time. You know their time is up and you hear the sound of a kitten. That means they have to wrap it up then or else they bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. And then I interview them. The entire thing is improvised. Nothing is planned. Uh, Anything can happen. We all meet the person together and I try to get as much information about their lives as we possibly can and uh, to see if maybe there's something else interesting about them that they don't know is as interesting as it is. You guys ready to start this fucking show or what? Here we go. Got a true late start time here, so we'll keep that in mind. We'll run long. I've pulled a name. That's going to go that way. And when um, this guy's done, we're going to go to that person. Ladies and gentlemen, starting tonight's show is one of our regulars. A very, very coveted position in the industry of stand-up comedy where these people have to write and perform a brand new 60 seconds every single week. It is not easy. This guy, we've seen highs. We've seen lows. We've seen extreme drug use, women, partying. The guy used to be homeless. Ladies and gentlemen, sing it if you know the words. This is Hans Kim. Thank you. I, uh, I think it's kind of fucked up that girls will get mad at you if you try to have sex with them after they do their hair and makeup and put on a nice outfit. Because that's when they're the hottest. Like, I can't fuck you when you're the hottest. I have to wait till you come home tired, wipe off your makeup, put on an old t-shirt. That's when Hans gets his turn. These bitches, they love cuddling. (laughs) The less circulation there is in my arm, the more love they feel. (laughs) If I'm ever in a UFC fight, I'm just gonna lay on the dude's arm for 15 minutes (laughs) and tell him about my day. I uh, love the ladies. I think it's uh, sad that sometimes I have erectile dysfunction during sex. Like this guy. (laughs) It's very hard, but it does make going through TSA a lot easier. Do your worst, boys. (laughs) How can I feel you violating me when I can barely feel the love of a woman? (laughs) All right, thank you. All right, Hans Kim. So wait, you have erectile dysfunction? Uh, Yes. Is that true? I just sometimes don't get as hard as I want to get uh, what does that mean exactly? Like you can, you, can, you can get hard, but just not as hard as you like. Yeah, and it's not as quick. There's a lot of like, you know, manual labor. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I think you have to say manual labor after doing that. And you've already painted the picture is, completely. Is that the cocaine? I mean, that's one of the things with cocaine. That's what I've been blaming it on recently. So but. you're back on cocaine? No, but she doesn't know that. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, so sex with them after they get ready. That's an interesting um, premise. Is that a thing that you actually do? I do try to do that a lot. (laughs) But what we found out about you in the past is that you're just trying to have sex with your girlfriend literally all the time. Is this still the case? No, she brings a lot of her friends over, and uh, so I can't fuck her when her friends are there. That's true. You cannot fuck her in front of her friends. <laughs> I'm glad that you figured that out, my sweet, sweet Hans. <laughs> uh, so you just bide your time, and then what happens? And then I'm like, hey, uh, do you want to take a nap real quick? Ah, <laughs> the old Korean nap. <laughs> ah, we know about this. Yes, indeed. Okay, so then what happens? So you go to your bed, you, 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 then what happens, Hans? And then I, uh, I'm like, I could give you a massage, 
And then I give her a massage. Ah, Korean massage, everybody. You can't even make it up. What else do you do? Math problems? Come on. <laughs> I love it. What else is going on in life, Hans? Um, I uh, recently went to Zilker Park and uh, invited a bunch of comedians. We did karaoke at Barton Springs. Ah, what'd you sing? Uh, hey there, Delilah. Okay. Can you give us a little example of what that yes. sounds like? You guys have that? You guys know that one? One, two, three, four. Hey there, Delilah, what's it like in New York City? I'm a thousand miles away, but girl, tonight you look so pretty. Yes, you do. Times Square can't shine as bright as you. I swear it's true. Hans Kim, everybody. Unbelievable. That was actually impressive. Absolutely adorable. Adorable. Massages and karaoke, folks. You can't make it up. That was so unexpected and beautiful. It, that's what happens. That, we're, that is just our first comedian of the night. This is like a love fest. All night long, baby. We're, we're not like Hans. We're going to stay hard all night. Am I right? Your first comedian straight out of the bucket, ladies and gentlemen, goes by the name of Lucas Goots, everyone. The Kill Tony debut, I do believe, of Lucas Goots. It's Lucas, everyone. So my best friend Jerry just got a job at the morgue. Shout out to that guy. He knows where he is. You know he's not here. He couldn't get tickets. Anyways, um, he got a job at the morgue of all places. I'm like, Jerry, that's spooky. That's where ghosts hang out, right? And he's like, you'll never believe how I got this job. He said, I only got this job because the old guy, he got caught eating the booty of one of the dead cadavers. Ooh, kind of spooky right in the boot of dead I was like, Jerry, that's disgusting. You can't be serious. He's like, yeah, dead ass. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I have a girlfriend. Really? For this joke. Yeah, I like her a lot. She's getting fat. Um, she's starting to look a lot like Mike Wazowski. You guys know Mike Wazowski, Monster Inc. You know, the tits, the guts, and the ass are all the same. She comes from her body. Give her a nice circular build. Well, he liked it. All right, fuck yeah. She cheats on me, though, but that's okay. There is good news, though. She is pregnant. I'm probably going to be a... Thank you. I can applaud for that. Probably going to be a dad. Statistically likely. A stepdad. Uh, we're going to have the gender reveal party on Sunday. And then a little bit later, we're going to have the race reveal party. I don't know about you guys, but I like to treat it like uh, roulette. My money's on black. Thank you. There you go. Lucas Goots. Everybody, am I saying that right? Goots? Uh, yes, sir. It is Goots. I'm part Jewish and German, but the German part of my family dominated the Jewish part, so I have a weird name. Thank you. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> okay, Jeffrey Ross. I'm gonna start with you. I want to know. I want to know what well, you think about this. That felt like two minutes. It did. Really like, I don't know if I missed a cat in there somewhere or that well, that was an eternity, but... Yeah. German and Jewish. My guess is he's always having an internal battle, you know Exactly. What I mean? it's like, well, put, throw yourself in the oven after that performance. Yeah. No, come on. Thank you. You need to let some of those no, I'm jokes... Kidding. I'm kidding. ...bake a little longer. I really enjoyed uh, Freddie Mercury poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he looks like if one of the characters from Friends died of AIDS. That is true. So no one told you life was going to be this way. <laughs> uh, so let's get into it, Lucas. I feel bad Goots. for making fun of you. I feel bad for making Aren't fun of you. Aren't you Jewish, too? Yeah. Wait. wait. Why did you say you But bad? when I'm with Tony, I'm, I, I don't like Jews. <laughs> That's true. When I'm on my own, I like juice, but when I'm here with Tony, look, I'm wearing my Yeezys. Yeah. It's oh. hilarious. <laughs> fucking lutely So, Lucas Goots, let's talk sure. about it. That was a lot of setups, little payoffs at the end, but you got them. You got them. You talk really fucking fast. Is that something you've always done? Only when I'm nervous. Only when I'm nervous. <laughs> do you hear that? You don't even know you do it, do you? Only when I'm nervous. Okay, Lucas, let's talk about it. How long have you been doing stand-up comedy? Uh, a little over two years now. Where are you from? 
Uh, originally, Brian calls Jason area. What? <laughs> it's, where the, uh, it's where the Aggies are, Texas a and University. They made some noise in the back, they know. Okay, thank you. You don't have to say they made noise. They just make noise, and then you we were talking. What do you do for work? Uh, I used to work for a legal insurance company, but I quit that to work at H-E-B. So the answer is H-E-B. <laughs> Much like your setups, you could really trim the fat on some of these answers. It's incredible. What do you do at H-E-B, the greatest grocery store ever known to human existence? Thank you. Uh, fuck with fruits and vegetables. Oh, I bet you do. We're going to have... We have both coming up later in the show, so it's very exciting. Uh... I love it. Fruits and vegetables. So you're in the produce section full time. Yes, sir. Stock in the cantaloupes. <laughs> Canty. Ask I know. <laughs> I love calling them that for some reason. I don't know. Okay. So Lucas, tell us something. Uh, what you do about uh, your personal life? Give us uh, give us some information. What else other than stand up comedy? What makes you Lucas Goots? Ooh, uh, I like to go diving in the river sometimes. Okay. <laughs> All right. You talking about perhaps down by Rainy Street after a night oh, of drinking? Oh, man. No. A little something for the locals out there, you know what I mean? No, nothing there but crabs. Good one, Lucas. Good one, Lucas. You son of a bitch. Okay, when you're not diving in rivers, what else? Basketball. Okay, what's your love life like? Uh, you get nervous around girls? You're like, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Want to go out? What are we doing? So What's your name? What do you do? What do you think? It's right here. You're looking at it. It's my right hand. Oh, that's disgusting. Uh, oh, my on. God. That Change is unbelievable. Uh, what's the last, when's the last time you've been uh, romantic with a woman? Uh, a couple of weeks ago. Okay. That's not bad. What'd you do? Jerk off on her? <laughs> You're like, look, I want to hook up with you, but I'm in a full-time relationship. With, uh... <laughs> no, that lasted a little long. Just came in my Where'd pants. you meet the girl two weeks ago? Wait, what? Wait, what? what? You what? No, he's... <laughs> he, it doesn't matter. No, no, we or... don't think you should repeat you it. <laughs> Lucas, where'd you meet this girl two weeks ago? Oh, she was a chuckle fucker. Okay. And she chose you, yeah. huh? Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought you had to get the chuckles in order to get the fuckles. <laughs> <laughs> I slow down a little bit when I'm drunk, but uh, yeah, I didn't have that opportunity. Wow. From the setup to the bed up, you know what I mean? Just yes, fucking, sir. Wow, incredible. So, how does that go for you? You seem like a premature ejaculator. <laughs> Only on days that end in Y. Um. Wow, I, I, I hate, I, I, I kind of hate you, Lucas. Uh, like this young body with jokes of like a grandfather. <laughs> Incredible. Lucas, any other fun facts about you that you think sets you apart from everybody else? Any other lifetime accomplishments? Any fun facts? You know, any deformities or anything like that? Uh, whew. Nothing really. I was going to do a penis joke, but uh, no. We've heard That's enough. enough. Yeah, yeah, we've, do, yeah, we see your sense of humor. It's really, really okay. By the way, you are standing there like you're about to belt out a fucking song. I don't know. <laughs> It worked for the for Hans. I don't yeah. know what it worked for. I don't know if it would work for. It's not gonna work for no, him. No, it's not gonna work. Here's a little joke book though. Catch. There you go. Oh, Lucas cool. Goots, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Thank you, man. Yeah. yeah nice Bones Eye makes these joke books. This one says "Stop" <laughs> with a hand. These oh little Kill Tony God. joke books. Oh wow! David Tell, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Kill Tony on a Monday Tony. night. Dave Attell is here. I hope you don't Tony. mind. I, I told him to just walk out when he got here. Yeah. Tony, yeah. I was at the old location. I apologize. <laughs> wow. Really? The yeah. belly room at yeah, the they comedy. Got, <laughs> they got some crazy stuff going on over there. Dave, you look no, like... I'm, so, I'm sorry I'm late, guys. I was outside making sure everything's covered in fentanyl. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what happened, Jeff? What's happening, What's buddy? happening? You look like you're dressed for today and tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Fuck, where's that Lucas when I need him? 
Great to see you. What a nice surprise that you're in Austin. This Hell is yeah. fantastic. Now, I don't know what uh, episode of Succession this was, but, you know, you guys are really laying down the law to these young comics, and I like to see it. And this crowd is here to play. Am I right, Tom? Are they right? They really are. Nice. Die hard comedy fans. Uh, you're looking good. What happened to you, buddy? You good? Yeah, no, I'm good. He took but he... <laughs> He took but a yoga class today. He stood on his head, and now he's red. Wow. That's what happens. That's true. I thought there was a TikTok challenge to stay in a pizza <laughs> oven or something. <laughs> you know what I love about a new club? Adjusting the audio. Thanks for bringing me up. All right, here we go. <laughs> now, Jeff, you sound you've been, good. You sound good. How yeah, do I you, look? You didn't say anything well, about it. Well, you've been very busy in the Ukraine lately, but, you know. <laughs> we have missiles... No, come on. Give it up for Vladimir Gluten. Now. So, here we go, everybody. These are our classic That's jokes. That's good, Dave. You still buying your clothes at AutoZone? Thank you. You can do better. Let's hear it. Wow, this is a fucking tough dais if I've ever seen one. Dave looks like he's here to fix the bathroom. <laughs> if you can find it. Now. This is definitely uh, a hall of mirrors. This is great, man. I was Welcome. just in Phoenix, dude. This How was Phoenix? Oh, it's hot, uh, It's hot. hot, hot, yes. Yeah. Even the dogs wear shoes. <laughs> but, um... I saw fake tits... What? I, I was in Phoenix. I saw fake tits melt in the heat. Oh, man. They have to water their old people there. They do. It's bad. Well, I don't know what's happening here. Is this like a comedy show or a legal drag brunch? What's happening? It's a little bit of both. By the way, Bumping Mics with Jeff Ross and Dave Attell is on there Netflix. And they're in Santa Inez, June 23rd. That casino, right? The Chumash. Oh, yeah. We're doing a show there. I love it. I love it. Well, Where else, Tony? Where else? I'll be at the Wilbur. That's right. Jeff Ross is in Portland, August 4th and 5th, Detroit, September 29th, and the Wilbur Theater shows added in Boston on September Whoa. 30th. So catch the Roastmaster General Thank doing Detroit. his stand-up comedy. Wait, Jeff, where are you going? Detroit, where? On the Amo Celebrity Showroom. Oh, my God. So Who's much booking fun. your tour? Dianne Feinstein? <laughs> you know, Jeff, you deserve better. <laughs> I love Diane Feinstein, and I love I, lo I love being on the road. I, I love it. It's the best crowds in the world right now. Here is amazing, but people are. I think the pandemic made people miss comedy live shows. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> doubt about it. Speaking of which, we're at one right now, and uh, yes. I pull the name out of the bucket. This guy gets sixty seconds uninterrupted, and then we talk to him afterwards. You've been on the show multiple times, Dave. I love it. I we're love honored to have you. How about one more time for the great no, Dave Attell, one of the best it. in the motherfucking world, right now, on this that, stage. That fine scene thing was too much. I'll pull back. What's that? <laughs> Save it for our casino gig. <laughs> <laughs> And so I pull guys. the name out, 60 seconds, uninterrupted, ladies and gentlemen, right now, making his Kill Tony debut, anything can happen, out of the bucket, make some noise for Jackson Leon, everybody. Jackson Here we Leon. go. Jackson Leon. Here he is. Great to see you, buddy. What's up? So uh, I just moved down here to Austin a couple days ago, and I kind of got to tell you about what I saw on 6th Street. You might be used to it, but this shit's crazy to me. I saw this um, lady, she's just standing around, like literally across the street from here. She was bent over, I don't know if she was cracked out or what, and she had no pants on at all, and that's not the crazy shit that I'm about to tell you. The crazy shit is that she had her gut, it was hanging down real low, like about three inches below her pussy. I only got a quick glance at this, maybe I got it wrong. I don't know what the picture you have in your head is, and I'm sorry that I had to paint that but it's different than what you have because you might be thinking like a really large woman. It's like, I don't know if you've ever seen somebody's gut who's had liposuction, but it was like just skin hanging down a good two inches below there. I, I don't know, I could do a different fucking minute. <laughs> I Is didn't this plan a that shit. You're on a roll, don't leave us hanging. What happened, Jackson? What happened? What I'm happened? Ha Jackson, I'm half hard, finish the story. <laughs> One minute, almost uninterrupted for Jackson Leon. Wow. Everybody, make some noise for Jackson, that everyone. A, Tony, Jackson, Jackson those I are this like therapy. I just had to. That material is better in front of a tire fire. That's real hobo shit. <laughs> I thought that was a police report. Yeah. I didn't know what. Yeah. 
Jackson, you're literally talking about something that everybody sees all the time, including outside on their way here, and you use that for your minute, making fun of a fat person. Are you aware that no. you are fat? No, no, She no. wasn't fat. Wasn't fat. She oh. looked like she had like a liposuction stomach, like just skin flapping down. What do you down. think she would say about you if she had wow. a minute right now? What do you think she Holy would say shit. she saw? I don't know, probably. I saw a kid wearing a South Park shirt while looking like a character from South Park. <laughs> Whoa. That's what I think. Easy. Tony. Easy. <laughs> So let's talk about it, Jackson. Absolutely <laughs> zero punchlines in 59 seconds. Uh, I didn't have uh, that's not Have true. you ever done stand-up comedy before? Um, this is probably my seventh or eighth time. Okay. Nice. Is it something that you take seriously? Um, well, I did it fucking around when I was driving in D.C., and then I did it a couple times in Pittsburgh, and I live up in Duluth, Minnesota. So what you do don't you, know where what that do is. You, you, well, you what is the name of your food truck? <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked on one. This guy's been all over. What do you do for work? Go um, ahead, Jackson. I've done tons of shit. I used to What drive do you do now? Right now I have money saved up and I'm just going to look for a job in a couple of weeks. How much I'm... money do you have saved up, honestly? Wow. It's one of my favorite questions to ask on this show. Um, Can I guess? Yeah. I'm just looking at you. I'm going to guess that your nest egg right now, and be honest with me, $4,200. That's over. That's over? over. That's nice. over? That's over? No, it's more. He it's looks more? Like a, it's more. Okay. Uh, you guys want to take a guess? We could do this yeah. Price is Right style. After the show, we're going to hang out. I know this woman, her pussy's hanging down with her liposuction in it. She'll fuck a guy like Thank you. Thank you. So how much do you have saved up? <laughs> um, at the moment, it's probably about 7000 I'm getting 2000 soon. So <laughs> Holy shit. What happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Did that come out of you, Jeff? What was that? Yes. It's got There's a trumpet behind you, Dave. All right, all right. Jackson is <laughs> a broken four, ankle four away from bankruptcy right now. This is very exciting. Uh, Dave's tired. He was spent the whole day trying to download Uber on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> kind of close. Well, you really gave it to him tonight, Tone. That's not fair. It's <laughs> a good kid. Can't you see he has to work on the highway? I mean, look at him. This guy, he looks like he escaped from a Jack Black prison camp. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. So Jack, he's a good guy. Jackson, you've done stand-up seven or eight times. Tell us, what do you do for fun? Like, what, what is your, what do you, what do you do? Um, I really just like to, I like to travel and try and meet new people, see fun shit, just go to cities, see what's going on. That's why like, I moved like, down can here. Can you give us an example of one of the highlights of these endeavors of yours as of recent? Like, something that you did? Um, well, I was in D.C. and I... So was I. Yeah. <laughs> I was the guy going up to steps. I think I saw you going the other way. <laughs> this was... I'm sorry, was... son. Go ahead. Where were you saying? Whitney... Come on, this is serious. Tony has to pick the next unpaid intern. Go ahead. <laughs> Can you wash a lotus? <laughs> This guy looks like he stormed the Capitol Grill. <laughs> hey. Yeah, you're fucking... Holy shit, what happened? These are some great ones. Uh, Jackson, don't take it so personally, for God's sake. So you were in good. D you, were, you were in D.C., and then what? Um, yeah, I kind of fucked up. This is more of a bit than a story. Let's, but, um, let's hear it. Well, it's just something interesting. I was in D.C., and I want to get some weed, because I'm high as fuck right now. Yeah. And um, when you're, you're in D.C., the best weed. Holocaust Museum. Honestly. <laughs> I mean, it's so good, you will not remember. I mean, uh, sorry. Yeah. Trying to connect never to forget, the local... Never forget, never <laughs> forget. I'm, try I'm trying to connect to the local Which militia crowd. <laughs> this guy, all right, never mind. All right. He's great, he's great. He's fucking great. Seven times up there, dude, you're killing it. You're doing good. Good. But don't uh, go dirty you. right away. Work everyone into it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I've never said any of this on stage. This was yesterday. This so. is right. <laughs> I just I had to say it. Let me let me Some ask. Something should just be spray painted on a wall. You know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> let me ask you this. You've done it seven or eight times tonight. You talked about something that you saw yesterday. Yeah. Can you give us an example of one quick joke that you did one of these seven or eight other sets that you've done, so that we have any idea what you're capable of whatsoever? Yeah. Okay. So. I was talking about D.C. I was in D.C. trying to buy weed. The weird thing there is, so 
you can you can own weed, you can smoke weed, but you can't buy weed. So what you do is you go and you buy like a shirt or a fucking piece of art and they give you some weed and they call that a gift. Yeah. That's not what a gift is, and I know that's not what a gift is, because I didn't see a single fucking prostitute on the corner with a t shirt rack selling fucking blowjobs. Wow. I would have paid a thousand dollars for that shirt. I don't even need the goddamn blowjob, I'll just re gift that. Shit. Okay, how about like That's a hardcore. joke, perhaps? Like something that like... <laughs> oh, I, thought yeah. was, I thought it was pretty good. Standards are higher here than northern Minnesota. Jackson, so. that was good. A Yelp review. <laughs> yeah. That was fucking good. Jackson, you have your own style. It's you definitely... Laid down the law. It's definitely different. Uh, congratulations. Here's a little joke book from the great Bones Eye. Can you catch it? Ready? Here we go. Wow. Good job. There he goes, nice everybody. Job. Jackson Leon. Good one, Jackson. All right. Jackson, good buddy. That was good. Now, this is an exciting moment, ladies and gentlemen, because we do have one of our golden ticket winners in town, everybody. This young man is a freak of nature. This is one of the guys that's coming for everybody's jobs. One of the young superstars of the mothership just moved to Austin, Texas. This guy, unlike many of the others that you've seen recently, this guy got his golden ticket five years ago at the age of 21 on one of his first appearances ever. You're about to watch The Force of Nature. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Enrique Chacon. Yes. Yo, 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 what's up, motherfuckers? I was in a room full of people kind of like right now recording a live show and... At the end of it, somebody told me a lot that I look like the gang leader of a woman's prison. <laughs> hey, I fuck y'all for laughing, bro, because I got feelings, but man, they're not wrong. I really do look like the gang leader of a woman's prison, man. I remember the first time I walked into a lesbian bar, though. I'm not going to lie, man. I was breaking hearts up in this bitch. <laughs> I didn't even know it was a lesbian bar at first, bro. I thought it was just my night, bro. I was walking around with my boys like, yo, these plaster bitches are feeling me, dog. So, yeah, man, it was all fun and games until I actually went into the restroom and the lesbian that was hitting on me at night trying to finger back me, bro. And I don't know how to say this for these alpha straight white males, man, but I think she hit my G-spot, son. Cause she went past my food all the way down to my tent and I started factory resetting right then and there, bro. Walking around like my iPhone got an iOS update, dude. So yeah, man, I got molested by this lesbian and it was the best day of my life. <laughs> Thank you. Enrique Chacon, ladies and gentlemen. A minute filled with laughter and energy. Fuck yeah. The great Enrique Chacon, comedian, Bucky's employee. Bucky's employee, baby. Bucky's is the greatest gas hour. station known to man. You've never but been ne- in a Bucky's? No. Oh, you're in for a treat. Dave, you know about Bucky's, right? You stay in there. First of all, I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I- wow. I didn't mean, I'm sorry, under a, under a pseudonym, so don't try to go to his room. <laughs> now, this is the next level of the competition, correct? Because this, this person is a pro yeah. all the way through. Oh, yeah. appreciate you, man. A pro. Thank yeah. you, Attila. Honestly, you. get a test. Yeah. Now, Thank you, brother. He's a regular. He got like a special golden ticket to come on without Thanks, having ramps. A- you know, uh, <laughs> I get it. Thanks. No, please, yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> what, honey, what? <laughs> I don't know you what asked a question. I don't know I what to say. The question. I'm kind of blown away. I was really impressed. All right, so, well. Enrique, tell Dave and Jeff uh, some stuff about your life. Fucking tell tell these guys. Yeah, They're well, seeing you for the first time. Oh, yeah, so working at Bucky's, man, I wear the mascot suit sometimes, man. And, Fuck, uh, yeah. Uh, it, it, I haven't lost a pound, bro, and I'm pissed off about that shit, dude. They said I was going to lose weight, man, and uh, I recently chipped my tooth, bro, and I was trying to put a worksman's claim right, but they were going to drug test me, so I was like, nah, I'm good, dude. I'm, <laughs> I feel better already, bro. Fuck this shit. <laughs> I was not trying to fuck, fuck my money up, man. Fuck. 
good stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really, rip right from the streets. So Enrique, originally from Houston, Texas, found you five years ago. You're 26 now? I'm 26 now, yeah. Right. And you just moved to Austin. What's your living situation like? Man, I live in a seven-acre property, bro. So I went from uh, townhome living to country living, bro. Nobody told me about all these fucking bugs, dude. (laughs) There's tarantulas in Texas, bro. I never fucking heard of that shit, bro, ever, man. We call them migrants. Now, <laughs> step it up, Enrique. If you want to be the next mayor, step it up. He's so the yeah, best. Man. Dave, a that one got an under the table bump. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I hit something hard. I know that. Yeah. Save yeah. it for Chumash Casino, June 26th. <laughs> nice plug. That is June 23rd in Santa Inez. In- <laughs> this Enrique is great. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to throw it down right now. Do you want to do a guest spot on my show tomorrow? Oh! Yeah. Thank you. Let's go! Yes! Yeah, yeah. Indeed, Dave Attell doing sold-out shows in the Fat Man tomorrow and the next night, and you are on those shows. Fuck, Fuck yeah. yeah. Or at least man. tomorrow's Thank show, yeah. And then afterwards... It makes working at Bucky's worth it, bro. Aren't you going to... Aren't you going to return the favor and invite me to a dog fight? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of hospitality is this, Tony? <laughs> I got you. Fair. I'm, I'm going to invite you to whatever the fuck you want, dude. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Thanks, Enrique. <laughs> <laughs> Enrique Chacon, you fucking did it again. He You're did. proving exactly your strength Thank and your you, promise. It's unbelievable. There he goes, Enrique fuck Chacon, is ladies and gentlemen. Follow me at Enrique yeah. Comedy. Have a good night. That's the future right there. That's what it looks like. Hey, when Enrique, tomorrow I'll definitely come by. That's so nice, Dave. Yep. You know, he kind of looks like Wednesday fucked Thursday, <laughs> and I like that. And he sounds like an old black lady. Show. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Fluffy's fluffer. He was great. <laughs> I pulled another name out of the bucket. We're going to meet them all together. Not easy to follow Enrique Chacon, but... Ladies and gentlemen, here's the Kill Tony debut of Logan Farr, everyone. Logan. Logan Farr. Logan. 60 seconds uninterrupted to Logan Farr. What's up, guys? Whoa. Y'all are noticing some shit about me. Do you know how fucked up it is to be a veteran missing both your legs and not have lost them in war? <laughs> I got hit by a train on my 21st birthday. Yeah, I tell you guys that as a PSA. Please be very, very specific with your birthday wishes. (laughs) That is not the train I wanted to be a part of. Nice, nice. Whoa, good one. I'm loving it, I'm loving it. Oh shit, I thought I said something. (laughs) My bad. I did get my second wish though. I'm black from the waist down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a great one. fucked up, though. Because I got to ask a lot of ignorant questions, like, Logan, why did you pick the black legs? <laughs> <laughs> it's because they're faster. <laughs> nice one. Logan. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kill Tony wow. debut of Logan Farr. Absolutely yeah. incredible, my wow. friend. I know this guy. Give him a hand. Logan. Boom. Come on, Great give way. him two legs as well. Let's go. Come on. This is incredible. That was... Absolutely. So you got run over by a train? Yeah. And look at you now. Now you're on the right track. <laughs> Hell yeah. Tony. <laughs> Tony came, uh, came to play tonight. I know this guy. I you know do? This guy, by the way. Were yeah. you the conductor? <laughs> <laughs> How do you know him? From Roast Battle. He went on, he's done Roast Battle in the Belly Room in, in, in L.A. And Roast Battle last night. He did an amazing fucking epic wow. battle in a national tournament. And... Logan, you're, you're fucking amazing. You killed last night. You killed tonight. It's so cool that you're on this leg of the tour. Um, <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> absolutely incredible. So explain to us how this goes down. Can you paint a picture? Yeah, your, yeah. It's your 21st birthday, you yeah. said? So it's the day I got home from my deployment. My sergeants took me off for my 21st <laughs> birthday. <laughs> You've got to be fucking <laughs> kidding me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, and we went out, and the city planner decided to put a rail yard next to all the bars. Mm -hmm. And then the bars on one side of the street close at two. The ones on the other side close at three. And you guys are hanging out late night. You guys are like, let's do some rails. Yeah. <laughs> I chose the third one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can I, Logan, impressed all the way through, but can I give you some advice for the next birthday? Two words, ready? Yeah. Dave and Busters. All right, yeah. <laughs> Stay out of the train yard. That's for the professionals, yeah. all right? <laughs> Little oh. hobo wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I want to get back to this, though. Your, yeah. It's your birthday. Now it's 2, 3 a.m. Then what happens? So uh, I started inviting a lot of people to our uh, party. We're having fun. There's supposed to be a house party. Uh, we've got a bunch of Ubers to leave, and my group was supposed to have a sober guy. He, stayed, he got drunk. Uh -huh. <laughs> we all split up into different Ubers, and each Uber thought I was in a different Uber. I got left behind. And oh. they went to, a, they went to a something else, and then I went to the train tracks. Wow. So you went to the you went to the oh, train. That is inappropriate. <laughs> I don't remember like I'm, these are the things I'm told afterwards. Like I don't remember going out. You were wow. drunk. Oh yeah. I, uh, when I they found me after I got hit, I had a point three six alcohol level after bleeding out. Oh my wow. god. Yeah. So, much shit. like yeah. much like your legs, you were blacked out. Oh yeah. yeah. You didn't feel it. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. When and you do that joke, you should say, because they're faster and they match my dick. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah. do you think you would get more action with the ladies if you said it was a shark attack? Probably. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> they just get sad. <laughs> yeah. Not everyone's into, uh, you know, um, public transportation. You know what I'm saying? I mean, read the audience. Autistic ladies. Read the audience. <laughs> <laughs> so absolutely incredible you're on the tracks so you didn't even notice a train you had no idea what happened you wake yeah. up the next day in a hospital yeah and you don't have your legs yeah okay <laughs> incredible but i am 6'2 now so there's that well, well that's you, good what, 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 what were you before 5'11 wow yeah. wow hey hey give it up that's pretty good that's, what's that's that like good. what's it like getting taller it's the shit Hell yeah. <laughs> You're riding the gravy train, my friend. This is incredible. <laughs> so what else about your life? What do you do for work? Uh, I coach jujitsu. I travel for that. Uh, jujitsu? Yeah. <laughs> it's not fair. Good, good luck with that ankle lock. <laughs> Jesus. This motherfucker will not tap at all. <laughs> I fucking... Uh, I am known for fucking up people's legs. Uh, it's kind of a controversy, me competing. Because people get mad when I rip on heel hooks like, bitch, right. I don't like them. Right. <laughs> so how often do you train? <laughs> oh, Tony. I can't help Ray, myself. Tony, my God. I can't help great. myself. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, every single day. Every single day. Yeah. Do you have a special diet or anything that you do? Like <laughs> Beer and a lot of more food. A, like, a that's lot all of, it is. A lot of yeah. more food. Right. It was one bad night. <laughs> Okay. All right. How do you stay up? How do you keep your attitude so good? You're not mad at the at your buddies. You're not mad nah. at the at the the city planner that put the, the rails by nah. the. I mean, I saw some underlying sort of like. <laughs> nah, for me it was one of those things where it's like too many people focus on the past and they like hold on to shit. I'm like, I'm gonna make people laugh. Like nice. that's it. Right. Yeah. And I it, love it. Yeah. And if they don't, whip off one of your fucking legs and beat them to death. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. When you lose your legs, do you get to say goodbye to them? Like, do they like bring them out so you can look at them? Did you get to? I Jesus asked. They, they threw them away before I woke up. I was pissed. Wow. Like, oh. I wanted to bronze them. I thought it'd be funny. Mm. <laughs> right. Were you a comedian thinking about being a comedian before nah, that? I was a firefighter in the Air Force. Uh, oh wow! Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Holy shit! So what an incredible fucking story. And you're wasting your life doing roast battle. Okay. No, I'm joking. That's amazing that you can put that towards your towards art and making people laugh. That blows me away, man. And Tony, Thank I'm going to say it. I'd like this guy to do a guest spot. And you better start walking now because it's a little far away. So, <laughs> Another guest spot? Yes. I'm wow, look at that. Spot. Logan Farr. Enrique, That's huge. Logan. I'm creating my own. I love it. I'm creating my own Fast and Furious theme. Are, the legless vet. Are you going to be here the Thursday? The genderless Enrique. <laughs> You're in. Hell yeah. Boom. Thank you. Absolutely incredible. Tomorrow. Hell yeah. 
in the Fat Man sold out show tomorrow night. That is Hell yeah. absolutely. Are you, you going to be here Thursday? Yeah, I'll be here till oh. June tenth. I'd love to have you on the Secret Show at sunset. Yeah. Wow. wow, look it at just that! Giving and giving for this guy. And you know what, Jeff? You know what? You're going to be here Friday. Yes, sir. I have a pair of size twelve Nikes that. Uh, yeah. I need broken in. If you could help me out with them, uh, that'd be great. Oh, you know what? Um, me and my buddies are going skiing in Aspen. <laughs> uh, it's the giving tree tonight. <laughs> Dave whispered in my ear. Tell, right. Ask him to go skiing. <laughs> so now you're in Austin. So what's the name of your band? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Runaway train? <laughs> <laughs> Tony, you are fantastic tonight. <laughs> Every time you say train, your face gets redder. I love it. I mean, yeah, it's, it's true. My blood pressure is booming right the man's now. A, the man's a walking ambler. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can you uh, send the guy in on the ventilator? All right, sorry. Yeah. I'll bring him right up. <laughs> Logan, congratulations. You did as good as you could possibly do. You're leaving with a big joke book from the great tomorrow, Bones Eye. Tomorrow, Catch that. Logan Farr, ladies and gentlemen. There you have it. That's how it's wow. done. That was great. Ladies and gentlemen, your next comedian, straight out of the bucket, goes by the name of Derek Dimple, everybody. Derek, Derek. Dimple. 60 seconds uninterrupted for Derek Dimple. Wow. Comedy mothership, make some noise if you're having a good time. Wow. I'm autistic. <laughs> Don't get weird. I'm the one who's microdosing special needs every day. <laughs> it's my dad who's into model trains, though. <laughs> you figure that one out. Doesn't totally make sense that I'm autistic because my favorite kind of pornography has lots of eye contact. <laughs> Very good. Doesn't matter that it's pixelated. It just makes you feel like they want you, you know? All right. I'll bust a load in my eyes later. <laughs> I'm also a substitute teacher. Mm. That's the right response. <laughs> Yeah, I do it for the money, so don't make any noise. That's fine. <laughs> All right, that's good. Okay, wow. Derek Dimple, everybody. Hello, Derek. How are you? You've been on the show before. You have a face that I could never forget in a million years. <laughs> oh, you might know my full, my full name, Tony, but I have never been on this show before. Is that true? That is absolutely true. No wow. way God made two yeah. people that look like that. <laughs> that, is, that is... Why would he do that? Incredible. Wow. Nope. How do I know your name? Uh, uh, well, we spent last Christmas together, actually two Christmases ago. What happened? Uh, okay, we were over at Friends Bar. Bob Flocka was playing. Yes. And we were hanging. Oh, yeah, and then you caught up with us at Latchkey. Yes. Yeah, and we played a trivia Oh, I game. caught up with you. Yes, yes. indeed. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yes. yeah. Hey, yep. has anybody yep. seen Derek Dimple anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody you better know to hang out with in the world. Nobody remembers better than an autistic. All <laughs> yeah. right. What was the weather? What was the weather? <laughs> I can't imagine. I was probably so drunk, I was about to take the railway track there. Uh, All right. What so, is your full name? Napoleon Not So Dynamite? Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> What's Good. yours? Gumdrop McGee? Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. Hey, now. Abadi, abadi, wow. abadi. Autism <laughs> versus fibromyalgia. We never thought we'd see this. This is a fucking battle royale. Where's that guy, the Transformer guy? <laughs> no, it's my sisters that are trans. Now, let me ask you this. <laughs> I have two of them. You have two trans sisters? I do. Two are you serious? I'm serious. Wow, wow, that's like hitting the worst lottery ever. <laughs> yeah, tell that to my dad. He paid for it. It's like you hit, you hit the... Holy shit. Wow. This teddy bear has teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Seems this like your guy dad's balls kind of to the wall, man. Yeah, he's hardcore. I like it. Seems like your dad's kind of into it. <laughs> well, when he called and told me about my second sister, I said, "Well, Dad, there's something I've been meaning to tell you for a really long time." 
I'm a woman too. <laughs> we had a good time for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Derek, what do you do for a living? Uh, well, uh, substitute teacher full time. S- uh, mostly, I sell beer in alleyways. <laughs> is, we I heard of this. It's crazy. How much? Have I got to I got to know since you're here, there? Derek. Derek, yeah. over here. How much money do you make on a Monday selling beer in an alleyway? I gotta know. On a good night, I clear three hundred bucks after expenses. Wow, wow. that's really good. That's I pay for rent with that. Yeah. Hell yeah, <laughs> I love it. Okay. <laughs> Are you really a okay, substitute? big man? Are you really a substitute <laughs> teacher, Derek? Uh, I was. What happened there? Oh, <laughs> Derek. No, uh oh, no. Before you, that uh, shit. Fuck. No. <laughs> All right, easy. No All need right. for a QAnon. Code. I have the face now, of a pedophile. <laughs> Derek, I'm out of guest spots, <laughs> but I was going to invite you to swim against my daughter. What do you think? <laughs> Well, I think in a sperm swimming contest, mine get there first. Fuck, dude. Before you. You're hey, awesome. Shit, fuck, that was stupid. That All joke right. worked better in front of the mirror with your hairbrush <laughs> than it did right here. <laughs> this is the big two leagues, Jerry. Don't hold back, you buddy. You look like You're a homeless it. pirate. Uh, thank you. Derek, Derek, Derek. <laughs> okay, you right. gotta, you can't, you can't swing at the throne with fucking <laughs> no, no, with let, fucking let him gel blasters. <laughs> okay. So, so, I, yeah, uh, so in my high school classes... I was do work back to substitute teaching. I was uh, uh, so I used to do like five minute stand up sets at the end of the high school class if they were cool, right? Oh, yeah, but but I was okay. Go ahead, react. Derek, st- <laughs> Derek, stay in the pocket here, bro. Okay, I'll stay this in the pocket. This guy is a hero. And Fight your autism. Let it win, win the battle. Push it, push it within you, <laughs> deep inside. <laughs> Round one, Derek versus his autism. No, <laughs> don't fucking do it, Tony. <laughs> These people have skills. <laughs> How much is uh, gas going to cost next week? <laughs> <laughs> they know things, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> they know things. <laughs> I was very careful about censorship up until one day I, uh, I, I did a stand-up set, and I think I was just really sick of those fucking kids. And... Uh, <laughs> I accidentally dropped some curse words at the beginning, and I said, ah, oh, shit, fuck, ah, oh, I'm getting fired today. And so then I, I let him have it. I told a really dirty joke. And there was this, there was this one girl who was filming with a, her pink cell phone case, right? Ah, those yeah. dang pangs, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, I'm not a substitute teacher anymore, so. Now you're a substitute comedian. How exciting. What do you do for fun, Derek Dimble? You seem like a guy that has like a lot of action figures in your studio apartment or something like that. Just right. kidding. You have multiple roommates. Yeah, practices to Karate Kid, you know. Um. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but for what do you do? What are your hobbies? Uh, well, I like swimming. I like playing pool. I don't really have too many times for uh, too much time for hobbies because I devote about uh, 60 hours a week to doing stand-up comedy six nights a week, and I host three open mics out here in Austin, Texas. Whoa. Keep whistling, please. That's great, buddy. <laughs> All right, Derek. Well, fun times, my friend. Uh, congratulations. That was a, you're getting a medium joke book. Congratulations, no. Derek. How do you Derek, feel? That good. Was hard. You're happy? You came Great out job, hard, buddy. Great job, Derek. You came out hard. Hey, have a good night, you guys. Thank you so much. You I like how you keep swinging. I like how you keep swinging. You did, buddy. You held go the ahead, stage. Go ahead. You're good. Go ahead. Can I smoke a joint here? Yeah, Dave. Do you mind if I smoke a joint? Please go ahead. In a town of people addicted to Trank, it's great to see someone classic. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of those moments where we get to take a break from the bucket and enjoy the unbelievable prowess of one of our regulars, one of the longest standing regulars in the history of the show, famous for his great roasting and writing skills. How loud can this place get for the one and only David motherfucking Lucas, everybody? Holy shit. Oh my God. Lucas. Yeah. Uh, roaches are the niggas of the insect community. <laughs> For real, man. 
They got ant farms. They always try to save ladybirds, lady ladybugs and shit. Nobody try to save a roach. You see a roach, you like kill that nigga. What? The fuck? <laughs> I like racism. I really do, man. Uh, I'm happy that white people chose to bring me from Africa over here, man. I, I really think we need to bring some of that old shit back. I think we need to bring back uh, lynchings. I really do, cause, cause these niggas is out of control, man. We. We got to teach them, you know what I'm saying? We need to bring back a public lynching and the first person we're going to do it to is Kodak Black. That <laughs> society would be better without him. <laughs> All right, that's it. <laughs> exactly 60 seconds from the veteran David Lucas. Welcome, yeah. David. How What's are up? you? What's up, man? Y'all having fun up here? Very fun set. Good stuff. Yeah. How, how do you feel? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> You are cool. Thank you, Jeff. Great to see you, David. You too, Jeff. <laughs> oh, you can feel the tension in the air, ladies and gentlemen. I was genuinely saying hi. Just we did a hi. We did a Super Bowl commercial together. Yeah. I love we this did guy. a Super Bowl commercial together. I love this guy. Yeah, they had a walnut roasting a peanut. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Ross, because he ain't got no... Because he was the planter's David Lucas. peanut commercial. You'd have, yeah. to, you'd have to tell the... I don't think they oh, know yeah, about the, right, your, yeah. your guys' peanut commercial. <laughs> By the way, it should be known now that uh, Planners uh, is a show corporation. Yes, it was. Oh. <laughs> I just caught that shit. It's so cool that you guys had a commercial during the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is also what David eats his cereal out of every morning. Hey, you was jealous at the halftime show because Rihanna was pregnant, nigga. Get your... <laughs> that is true. That's supposed to be me. I wish I was... <laughs> <laughs> I identify as a black pregnant woman, so just to let you know. Um, David, how's life going? What's shaking this Everything week? Everything great, man. You know, got a lot of dates coming up, just hitting the road, bro, trying to become a better headliner and shit. That's right. It. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dave, you've seen the great David yeah, Lucas before. Shit, where, where are you headed, buddy? Uh, Baltimore and Philly, Atlanta. Yeah. Wow, shit, dude. Holy shit. Where are you headed? Where am I headed? Probably to rehab, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I'm at the end of it. You're at the beginning of it. <laughs> Buddy, I've seen you, I think, at one of the other events you've had, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Always new material. That's balls in front of a crowd like this. That's yes, great. Absolutely. I love it. Balls of steel. He's also shaped like a ball, so it's well, very There you exciting. go. Tony, you're a little feminine ass, nigga. What the fuck? You, you got your boyfriend letterman jacket on, nigga. This <laughs> is fucking... Oh, don't make fun of my buddy. I Jeff, shut your ass up. You look like a police sketch of uh, Paula Dean. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Easy, Jeff. Give me no, a chance. No, don't leave, Jeff. <laughs> don't leave. Don't leave. <laughs> Come on, Jeff. Coming from a guy that looks like he writes barbecue reviews for his diary. Wow. This is tough. Jeff, it you is. look like a naked mole rat. But your ass. Holy shit. <laughs> this is like landlord on tenant. I've never seen this. <laughs> <laughs> this is not going to end well. We need to de-escalate it. Hey, Dave, you look like you got your plumbing certificate, bitch. Get your Thank you. <laughs> plumbing certificate. If, you, if you're here, who's, who's, who's working at every Denny's everywhere, all right? <laughs> What'd you ask for, a Denver omelet? When I'm ready, when I'm ready. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you think you're, you're playing with a child here? You're playing with a child now? If Homeless was a video game, you look like the last nigga that got a battle to get a tent. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I, heard, I heard you just got a part in that new movie, Wakanta. Now, <laughs> meaning I can't walk up the steps. Now, <laughs> sorry. David Tell, I heard you doing Home Alone on Ice, bitch. Get your mama. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, I got pulled into a Jeff. Get me out of this. <laughs> No, Ben, you want to wear a do rag? Get your motherfucker Harley Davidson driving ass up out of here, boy. Whoa. That's too far. I'm not That's wearing my friend. Friend. Look at that. That's I'm not my wearing a do rag. Boy, you got Jeff Ross drawers on your head, Ben. What the oh, fuck? Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> this guy really came alive. Hey, David, tell. I I've, need you I've only seen this at the counter at Popeyes. I mean, honestly, that energy, that commitment. Hey, Dave, I need you to shave your beard to give Jeff Ross some eyebrows, bitch. <laughs> that motherfucker up here looking like a mannequin. <laughs> Very nice. 
That's wow. not funny because I have alopecia, which I believe is your aunt's name. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> wow. I guess what we're trying to say is loan forgiveness. You know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> we all believe in it. Hell yeah. <laughs> loan forgiveness. Tony, way to run for cover during that fucking civil rights march. <laughs> <laughs> David Lucas, you're the fucking man. Hey, you're you, great, bro. buddy. You Appreciate took on you, all comers. Yeah. That's Absolutely ball. incredible. That's fucking ball. As always, killing, thriving. David Lucas, ladies and Very gentlemen. Nice, there he man. goes. Very Make nice. some noise for David Lucas, everybody. One of the great Frankensteins of regularship here in the history of Kill Tony. An absolute monster. Go see him on the road. Baltimore, Philly, a bunch of other places. All right. I pulled another name out of the bucket. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to meet them all together for the first time. You guys still having fun out there? All right, here we go. The Kill Tony debut of Tito, everybody. Tito. Here's Tito, everyone. Hell yeah, my name is Tito, and I look like a Tito. Right? <laughs> right? If you close your eyes, you imagine that shit would be me. You know? A lot of people think I'm gay. I just gotta remind them I'm just Puerto Rican. You know? <laughs> I'm half Mexican and half Puerto Rican, which is confusing for a lot of people, especially in Mexico. Over there, they're just like, oh my God, just so Puerto Rican. In Puerto Rico, they're like, oh my God, just so Mexican. But in the States, white women fuck me because they think I'm a black guy. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I never say no either. I'm like, you got that right, young blood. <laughs> Start tap dancing and shit. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> you know? But with the rings and the fucking nails and shit, I feel like I'm trying to look like a bad guy. But I look like a bad guy from a musical. It's fucked up. <laughs> like if we get in a fight, I just throw a glitter bomb and then snap my fingers out that bitch. I'm like, nope. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, Tito, everybody. Tito. Well, welcome to the show, Tito. How are you? I'm pretty good, man. How, how, how you long have you been Tom? doing stand-up comedy? I've been doing about, uh, give and take with the pandemic, about five years. Okay, where at? Chicago. So you're, you're visiting right now from Chicago, or you moved yes, here? Sir. Yes, okay. sir. Okay, all right. What do you do for work in Chicago? Uh, I do a number of things. I, I run a little Amazon store. I have an Airbnb uh, in Mexico City, and then I drive Lyft. Wow, you re it's, you are Puerto Rican. Okay, <laughs> bro, I look like every Lyft driver ever. Rolling one is fucked up. I had a question for you. Uh, at one point in your set, you said that uh, white women, white American women, think you're a black guy. Ba 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 ba. Start tap dancing. Yeah. Is that something that you think black people do? <laughs> You've seen the movies. What the fuck? <laughs> What movie? <laughs> what movies are All you All ones that are in black and white. Uh, I feel like. <laughs> okay. All right. So, you, okay. <laughs> I'm just fucking around. The jokes. We get it. <laughs> we know. We know. It's just an interesting stereotype. Black people be <laughs> tap dancing. Yeah, that's... Have you ever seen a black person tap dance in real life? Yeah. Where at? Uh, I think it was New York. Where? <laughs> Big city. city somewhere. No, that was a seizure. Oh, All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Tito, what do you do for fun? Uh, I like to go to the gym. I like to, I like to uh, hang out with my friends. Uh, I watch basketball. Um, kind of like typical shit outside of comedy. And uh, so I don't kind of stay busy. I don't really do I like to travel. I travel a lot. I travel a lot. Okay. Yeah, that's my, that's my thing to do for fun. All right. So what's your, uh, what's your favorite kind of uh, woman to hook up with? You seem like a woman oh. type, right? <laughs> you, uh, get, you get around a bit, don't you, Tito? Yeah, for a long time, I used to date a, a, a type of gal that I was, I was calling a spooky bitches. I was dating spooky. I'm, I'm a little bit scared of where this is going. Was, yeah. she, was she one of those tap dancers? <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know the kind, right? Like the tattoos and uh, don't believe in God, but got faith in healing powers of rocks and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's yeah. kind of... <laughs> white, white girl. 
they're, 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 they're spreading. It's, uh, it's all over the place. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tito, you ever been in trouble with the law? Oh, multiple times. Like with, with what? Can you give us some examples? Uh, back in high school, um, I turned my basement into a club. When I was, I was a DJ, so I turned my basement into a club, and I would throw house parties in Chicago. Okay. And so, yeah, thanks. And I, w- I would get arrested a, a lot of times. Usually I would get arrested after I left my house because they were, like, spotting me. Yeah. Not, I'm, I'm Westside. So you were arrested in high school for throwing parties? Uh, throwing parties, uh, yeah, being rowdy. You know, we had a toilet paper fight on a football field uh, with our cars. <laughs> We got in our cars, got out of the sunroof, and just started throwing toilet paper at And this was in Chicago? Yeah. The Chicago police, as much as they have to do, were arresting you for throwing (laughs) parties in your basement in high school? (laughs) TP. Uh, I mean, they... they (laughs) We got got two calls coming in. We got a toilet paper battle in the streets and five people shot and killed. Let's go... uh, Hell we got to yeah. figure out this toilet paper situation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was I was I was a little out of my mind in high school. You know, it was uh, it was a lot of partying. It was uh, speeding, no license. I didn't have my license till the day I went to college. So every time I got pulled over, it was a problem. But I got out of it. Okay. Well, can I tell you what I like? Yeah. The name Tito. Thank you, boss. First of all, that's a cool name, dude. You should just call yourself Tito. What yeah, do you think? Tito. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I, I give people my last name, but they mess it up sometimes, so I just went with Tito. It doesn't matter. I've already given you four stars, and you haven't driven me anywhere. You know? <laughs> dude, you've been doing this. Chicago's not an easy town for comedy, and you get on there, you go on in Chicago? Yeah. Good, buddy. That is fucking awesome. Thank you, sir. Now, Jeff, what do you think? I saw him do Roast Battle. He killed it, and you killed it tonight. I thought Thank you were you, great. Sir. Not Thank easy to do a minute right off the fucking dome like... Ah! I was... Uh, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm I appreciate a little, you, Jeff. But that's the whole thing, timing. Like, I'm in the middle of a fucking compliment. You're uh, trying to get a bump. Uh, See, Dave knows to wait. <laughs> anyway. Tito, give us, a, what, before I let you go, give us one big, crazy, fun fact about your life. Something that you did, you accomplished, perhaps you, are, you have a special skill or talent other than um, comedy, something else about you. You're on a podcast <laughs> right now, so anything. I, uh... Like I don't know, man. I used to, <laughs> I was a paid dancer for a company that would entertain at like, uh, pers- like corporate events. Okay, what kind of dancing are we talking about? Tap dancing? <laughs> Tap dancing. You know. What kind of dancing? Uh, like we would do coordinated dance, but like I would like battle dudes with like pop and lock. Oh, wow. But not, you know, can, we get, can we get some music and see? The, put the mic in the mic stand, Tito. Or put it wherever you want, I guess. Here he is. He's going to do something now. Giving us a little... Oh, shit. Whoa. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Holy shit. All right, well... The old Chicago That's robot fantastic. there. Uh, There's no reason with that kind of talent you shouldn't be playing golf in Saudi Arabia. I mean, honestly. <laughs> you, there? Uh, you just wanted to say... Open, it's been so long, bro. I haven't danced in a long time. It must have been felt good to cut in a rut, am I right? Yeah. And what a fuck you to that guy with no legs. I mean, honestly. Good that's luck what, getting back there, that's Tito. What I, that's what I battled yesterday. <laughs> yeah. He had some good. Tell him one. Tell Dave one of your good roast battle jokes about uh, about, about that guy. <laughs> Logan's not racist. His two best legs are black. <laughs> A- another one. He already did that joke. <laughs> uh, he really puts the bro in broken. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, gee, what was the first one? Oh, um, he looks like a, a protein shake. Fuck the can opener. <laughs> ah, I like that one. Tony, you love roast jokes. Not in this economy. I do. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry to roast it up for a second there. That's but good. He, Let's... But, I, you know, I like the, you know, and I, you know, <laughs> I like the connection the that the two on. shows have. They're like oh. been married. Oh, totally. Because of the, Tony would do, like you said earlier, Mondays and Roast Battle would be on Tuesdays. And they both started within months of each other. Roast Battle started three or four months after Kill Tony in the belly room, which at the time, we had, there was no like new shows or a different format. It was just stand-up comedy shows. And somehow at the same 
era. Both of these crazy things started and ran night after night. Mondays and That's Tuesdays so cool. became two of the craziest nights at the store weekly. Um, so Still yeah. happening. I love it. Yeah. Makes me so happy. Yeah. I love it. I love it so much. Tito, congratulations. Fun times. Here's a big joke book by the great Adrian Cavazos wow. Bones Eye. You're, yeah. you're also leaving with a gel blaster. Congratulations, my friend. There goes Tito, everybody. I love it, Tito. Yeah, sure, man. All right. Great Pulled one, another Tito. name out of the bucket. We're going to keep it moving right now. Make some noise for your next comedian. Out of the bucket, Renea Ortiz. Renea or Renea Ortiz? Oh, there he is. Okay, one more, one more time for Renea Ortiz, everybody. I'm Renea Ortiz, not Renee Ortiz. I can make the far right laugh. I, I really can. The trade-off is that now my jokes are a hate crime. <laughs> South of the border. There's a price on my head in Mexico. There is. I know it's at least a couple of states. The reason why is I went to a wedding in tequila. No, I didn't go to a wedding off tequila, on tequila, in tequila. And I happened to dance with the daughter of the distillery, la hija de la distillería. The heir to the distillery from which we were being sponsored to drink from. And her father approaches me and says, if you touch my daughter, one more time, you're not gonna leave Mexico. I left to go take a piss. I jumped out the fucking window and left. I was somewhere else um, just walking. I think I still have the same blisters from that walk three months later. But I'm not going back. I'm not. Thank you. That was my time. Wow. That was amazing. Renea Ortiz, cool. you have to be one of the funniest Mexican gerbils we've ever had on this show before. I've this never been to an immigration hearing before, Tony. Yeah. This is really cool. This is incredible. So You're honor, might, might be one of the most Mexican-looking people we've ever... Was your mother a cactus? And your father a taquito, perhaps? Like, what exactly are you? This is incredible. I didn't realize they made My a Mexican a Stuart Little. Uh, this is incredible. My dad was a cactus. Okay, yep. Step on, uh, step on uh, the jokes and the border wall at the same time. Incredible. So let's Speaking talk about it, Renea. You are uh, as Mexican as it gets, right? Yeah, it's the tan. Uh, ever since I, I moved out here uh, two weeks ago. Oh, really? So I was looking like you two weeks ago. You were? Yeah. A guy with insurance? Yeah. Now, <laughs> let me ask you something. First of all, plan. what I love about you is you wrote down, you have material, right? You wrote through your jokes down? Just the, just the two. Just the, the two, two jokes. So okay. I like, I'm going to write something in the alley, and that's what I'm bringing up. I like it. Okay, yeah. now, all that stuff with the real, like, what, that really happened in Mexico? Unfortunately. It did. So yeah. how did you get here, then? Uh, I'm a resident here. I was born no, I know you are, but, uh, I mean, how did you get away from this guy? He thinks trained, Dave's an ICE I got a train to police Chihuahua. officer. And I'm a resident. I trained a Chihuahua, and then I uh, pretty much walked, like, half a mile and I was in Texas and then I was like you know what I fucking fuck with the show I uh I've seen like your guys' stand up shows on you know on various platforms and I was so like so no wait way, let's slow it. down a second here let's just Hold take a, a beat this I is all moving very fast I'm like, interested this is like a cool like locked up abroad kind of story yeah. you know it's like we're speed reading through this uh so you're in Chihuahua Mexico correct I got a train there you got a train yeah. there. Okay. Yeah. Did you hear any thumps or anything on the way? We had a, it's a weird <laughs> night with trains. Train okay. heavy episode. I was sleeping and there was people fucking under me. Right. Yeah. Right. And how long have you been right. doing stand-up? How long have you been doing stand-up now? Uh, this is my third time doing stand-up on stage and then my probably like 10th time on stage because I used to be in bands. Fuck, dude. Yeah. You were in bands? Yeah. What did you play? I know, like elementary. So I count them. <laughs> what, did you memories. what did you play in the band? Clarinet and then I moved to a saxophone. Why oh. would you give that up for this shit? I mean, honestly. You guys. I fucking love meeting people who like, sta like stand-up. It's just I feel like it's that that's home for me. So yeah. you're in Chihuahua. Yes. You walk to Texas, right? By yourself? Yeah, it's not a far walk from where the, like, the, the train will leave you. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then I just I was like, look, I'm a citizen. And they're like, that way. You'll find a bus that'll take you. That's to the all city. you had to say to get there. No, no, he he had to fucking do some some uh, you know like spy shit. He colored his hair, so now he looks like a Nordic tourist. <laughs> Oi, I've been they, here before, yeah. They let look, this young look. Viking across, of course. <laughs> and then the tan. So you said I'm a citizen, and yeah, is it just Kamala Harris? Like you're good. Come on in. 
this guy. If you can say you're a citizen, that's all we need. Well, with ID. With ID. Right, with that a Mexican ID. Uh, they, were, they were like, you're, you're a bit darker. Yeah, I've been in the desert a few days. Uh, I'm a bit darker, but this is me. And the hair is really what, like you said, what saved me. The well, highlights. The highlights. I said it. it. It's just a little. Now. <laughs> Shit. Wouldn't America be more fun if this is what the immigration panels were like? <laughs> really, this the is guy's how. a citizen, for God's sakes. I know. <laughs> so let me ask you this now. Yes. All right. You ready? Yeah. Yes or no? Okay. So you hooked up with that girl down there. I bet you the girls love you in this town. Yes or no? Only the short ones. The short women. Yes. You mean children? What do you mean? <laughs> Come on. I'm trying to get in on your world, buddy. I'm your biggest advocate here. I try to avoid being outside when uh, school's out. Oh, yeah, then I'm like, know. oh, I can't tell. Yes. May- maybe. Okay. No. All right, buddy, over here. Okay. Uh, what do you do for a living? Uh, right now, I'm working at a like a uh, like a car shop, like an auto body part shop. What do you do at the auto body shop? Uh, mostly like handle like sh- stuff leaving. So like you're here to pick up this part. Here you go. This is you. Let me see your ID. That's it. <laughs> Welcome back, the madness. Don't look him directly in the eyes. <laughs> oh, shit. What's I, think going? I, I think I just got enlightened. Hey, thanks, guys. Dave, right. Dave thinks this is a sketch. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Tito, give us one more crazy fun fact about you okay, that we yeah. would find surprising about your entire life. I lost my virginity at 13, and it was thanks to my mom. It was next to your mom? Is that what you thanks. said? Thanks. 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 Did you Thanks say? Did you say you lost it at 13 or your MS 13? What did you say? <laughs> at 13. Either way, I'm impressed. <laughs> so how did you lose it? Thanks to your mom. She so, let you fuck her. I know I'm in the south, but surprisingly, no. Okay, so what she happened? She threw a garden party. A garden party? A garden party. A gar. A gar- oh, 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 hold on a second. You should never. Pa- Wait a second. Tony. Hold Tony. On. You should never party where you work. <laughs> now, how are you letting all these easy ones go? This kid is a joke bag. I'll bring a leaf blower. Oh, my God. Can you explain to literally the entire room what a garden party is? So. Has, uh, have you, uh, make some noise if you've heard of a garden party Get before. back in that seat, Karen. Are you white enough? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Hell yeah. Down syndrome Meg Ryan has to go pee-pee, everybody. Oh, stop it. Fuck, Tony. This is, this what, is crazy. This is the war zone here. So uh, what is a garden party? Explain right, to us. Go ahead, so that, son. So, so that, we can, rem- so that we can be reminded of how yes. great of a country we live in. Tell us what a garden party is. If you need All to right. remember, you can sit on my lap. Now go ahead. No, um, so my mom is a grafter. If, if you don't know what that is, pretty much... If you know how to do it, you can get two different fruits, two different types of pears, put it on one tree, put up to like 25 different types of pears, put it on one tree that's also a pear tree. Oh my God, this is like your mom, your your mom's like Mexican Elon Musk. This is incredible. I mean, her trees are in Japan. So, you know, like, can you think about that? Like, they're like, okay, so your mom's grafting. Then what happens at the garden party? Pretty much celebrating the opening of now she can sell those commercially and they're Mm -hmm. protected. Like she can sell them and almost be exclusive in doing so. And so they threw a party and her best friend was like a co-founder. And she had with her husband five girls, Uh five different girls. Uh And he would always say like, I want to, I want to like a boy. I want a boy. I think it was just a sperm, honestly, but I ended up going home to watch movies with all of them because everybody was starting to get drunk. And he still wasn't drinking, so he's like, I'll drive you to my house, you guys go watch movies and go to sleep, and then everybody will get home, right? Oh, shit. Okay, then what I'm happens? I'm 13 at the time. So I'm like, all right, there's a, there's a person below my age, which was a year younger, 12. And then the next, the, next, the oldest was... A, a you lost your virginity to a 12-year-old? No. The next one was a, uh, like a junior in high school at the time. Okay. Right under 18. Okay. And she pretty much walked me through having sex while we were there. And at some point, her dad drove up, and she could tell it was his car. And he's like, oh, she's like, oh, fuck, they're home. So she hid me under her, because she's kind of like, she was thick. She's like a, bi- a big booty Latina, but like, like, yeah. like sexy, not, not like... Don't point at anybody. You. No, don't. You. I pointed. I pointed at someone's feet. Okay, you very know? good. Right, very right. good. So we're call. We're calling immigration right yeah. now. Very good. 
<laughs> All right, come back. Uh, come no, back. so yeah, so she pretty much walked me through, and then she like laid like this on me. Uh huh. And uh, that's when she felt my boner. Uh huh. And she's like, "Oh, okay." And she just does what every Mexican girl does at this point, right? <laughs> yep. The old wet front. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> First day, I didn't have it on my back. My goodness. Epstino Island. Look at you. Not the, not the first time you've been in Chihuahua. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, my friend, uh, congratulations, Tito. How long have you been with stand-up? Uh, officially now two weeks since I got Two here. weeks. Yeah. Well, congratulations, my friend. Thank Here's you. a little joke book. Can you catch it? Boom. There he goes. Tito, everybody. All right. Now, here's the deal. What happens now, Tony? You guys are in for yet another special treat. Another one of our big golden ticket winners are here, ladies and gentlemen, from Toronto, Canada. This young man has cerebral palsy that affects his voice, so he cannot speak, but he still kills. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Aaron Belial, everybody. Aaron. Here he is. <laughs> you guys got to give it up one more time for Aaron Belial. Yeah. How about one more time for Aaron Belial? A lot of things are harder for me like putting on a jacket, taking off a jacket, and texting while driving. <laughs> Anything I do is an inspiration. <laughs> I took a dump in a Home Depot the other day and I got a standing ovation. Oh my god, he's pooping all by himself. <laughs> I decided to steal a TV at Best Buy, and the staff was like, he's working so hard, fuck it, let's just give him a hand. I hit a cyclist with my car the other day and the guy says, oh you can drive, you're an inspiration. So I backed up and ran over his legs. <laughs> How's it feel to be an inspiration? <laughs> but now he is trying to steal my job and got new black legs. <laughs> People think it's amazing that I live alone. But what's really amazing is that I got all those heads in my freezer. <laughs> all by myself. Wow, Aaron Belial, unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Time after time after time, it always blows my mind. You really are an inspiration. It is incredible how good you are at stand-up comedy. Uh, you are the third most handicapped person that's been on the stage tonight. <laughs> Absolutely crushing. How's life going? What do you want to say today? Unbelievable the balls that it takes for you to come out here wearing that shirt. It's mind-boggling. <laughs> As if though we didn't already know you were Canadian. I have a question. Does your barber also have cerebral palsy? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was hilarious. That was great. Great. But at least I have one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Shit! Wow. That was the. 
That was the fastest Google Translate I've ever fucking Holy seen, shit. man. That goddamn fucking this guy's fucking. Never go against this guy in a Wi-Fi hotspot. I'll tell you that. <laughs> this guy's a fucking killer. Holy. Shit. You know, before you came up, I was afraid of AI. Now I love it. I do. Keep going. It uh, is absolutely incredible. Every joke was great. Aaron Belial. He's typing something. I kind of stumbled last night, and I got my watch stuck on a coat hook and couldn't move. I had to, like, rip it off of my hook arm. <laughs> oh, wow. Damn, so you broke your watch. How long were you stuck for? Yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> hours? Good question. <laughs> Three minutes. Wow. 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 Incredible. Do you have a video of this, please? <laughs> so, Aaron, what else is going on? What, do you, what have we not talked about that you think we should talk about? This is Those always... Those fucking thumbs, man. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. I was at the park with Hans for the karaoke, and I did better. Oh, my <laughs> God. That is incredible. Wow. Slamming on the other guys. Why wouldn't you? What'd you sing, Mr. Roboto? <laughs> Reluctantly crashed at the starting line. <laughs> Engines, Engines thumping, thumping and pumping in time. time. <laughs> the green light I, flashes, I, I, the flags I'm go cool. up. I sang Hey There, Delilah. <laughs> hey There, Delilah. I love it. Aaron Belial. Absolutely incredible as always. How much longer are you in Austin for? Visiting from Canada. Believe it or not, immigration's rougher to get from Canada to here. You can't just go, I'm a citizen. They keep an eye on these people. Until tonight as far as immigration knows. Right. Right. Have you ever thought about going through the Mexican border back to Canada? <laughs> I love it. Aaron, anything else we should talk about before letting you go after another unbelievably impressive performance? Yeah, so something you might not know about me is I have a service dog. Traveling and most things are different for me. It's difficult especially with my dog because he likes to shit in the airport. <laughs> ah. Is, is there anything I might I tried once to counteract the shitting in the airport by feeding him twice the morning before. That backfired when he projectile shit all over the floor in the middle of the security line. Wow. Wow. Hey, Nothing. do you want to do it some whippets? It smelled all the way through the heavy glass doors to the gate. The funniest thing about it is that they cleaned it, it and still let It smelled all the way through the heavy glass doors to the gate. What the fuck happened? Oh, my God. What the fuck? It is that they cleaned it and still let me board. I just made some extra grunts, and I was what? good to go. What the fuck just happened? <laughs> that was a... Dude. You have a... You have a you that have was a gender got... reveal, I think. <laughs> what was that? I just got mine raped by R2-D2. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. That was nuts, dude. Jesus Christ. Is that a dial he brought tone? his A game to a Best Buy. Wow. This guy is fucking crazy. It is unbelievable. He is an anomaly. I mean, just think. He's Don't you think there's something just wrong with us sitting and him standing? I mean, it really <laughs> is like it's like like the end of humanity or something. Tony, I don't know if you run a show or is this is just the world's longest personal injury attorney commercial, but <laughs> he's an anomaly. Just don't ask him to pronounce it because that would that would take weeks. Here he is, Aaron Belial, typing furiously with his right Something's thumb. Something's happening. Uh oh. We're just killing time while he finishes typing. It's all right. I, I smell a manifesto coming our way. Watch out. <laughs> if this is about the ramp, Joe's working on it. <laughs> Well, you might as well fill out an application. They need a dishwasher. No. Aaron <laughs> Belial. I love when you shrug your shoulders at me. You're like, I might as well just keep I really going. don't know what to say. You said it all. What do you got? What's going on? I'm excited for this now. What's the moment happening? passed. Yep. Aaron, here you are crushing in front of some of your favorite comedians and a sold-out crowd. You do it all the time. It's unbelievable. We love you here. Aaron, Still working job. on... Fantastic, trying to make him an American fantastic. citizen. Fantastic, it's incredible. Aaron. We will not stop until he's an American. How many of you think Aaron should be an American? 
So do we. Tony, you did it. Canada sent its best down. I pulled a name out of the bucket, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to meet them all together. Make some noise for Zach Laboza, everyone. Zach Laboza. Oh, my God. I got to... Here he is. The Kill Tony debut of Zach Laboza. Wow. Holy shit. So my girlfriend has cancer. (laughs) She... (laughs) Easy crowd. She hated it at first, but it grew on her. (laughs) <laughs> people come up to us after a show and they're like does she really have cancer I'm like no nah, she just loves the haircut <laughs> <laughs> people ask stupid questions like is there anything I can do to help I'm like yeah cure cancer <laughs> but this is a Denny's so why don't you check on my grand slam <laughs> It is tough. It's tough dating someone with cancer. It changes you as a man. Like, she has breast cancer, so I guess I'm an ass man now. (laughs) I do hate the question, is there anything you can do to help? It's like, I don't know, you know a good mortician? (laughs) I just want her to look good the last time we make love. That's my time. Thank you, guys. Wow. Worth the wait. Zach. Worth the wait, Tony. Worth the wait for that final tag there. Zach Laboza. That set was so dark, I think it should tap dance. Um, <laughs> geez, Louise. That set was darker than the other guy's legs. Yeah. <laughs> wow, Zach. Incredible. This is my first time seeing your face, and it Correct. is absolutely shocking. How are you, Zach? <laughs> I'm doing great, man. How are you Where doing? are you from? I'm from Chicago. Oh, another person from Chicago. Some very, boys. very, very excited. I thought people. that was a ball start. He came right out and said it. You know, I thought that was pretty ballsy, buddy. Thank you, man. Yeah, but nothing explains that shirt. <laughs> now, <laughs> my like- cancer-ridden <laughs> girlfriend got it for me. I don't know what she's trying to say. Wow, <laughs> my goodness, she wants your chest to be hideous too. <laughs> Tony, you have so many broken toys. I learned from the best. Tony has no fear. Tony has no fear. (laughs) And no tits. Uh, So, Zach, how long have you been with this girl? Uh, Six years. Six years. And what type of, what size breasts did she have before? Oh, my God. Is it both breasts? Yeah. uh, No, it was just one, but she got them both taken out. Oh, okay. So, what? (laughs) Yeah, and he signed up for this show. (laughs) So, this is. This is a little uh, give and take. It's, an, it's a booming economy. Right. So what size boobs did she have before? She had C's, now they're D's. Wait, what do you mean? She had them taken off and then got implants? Yeah. Oh, okay. Fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, yeah. My That's man knows. Incredible. That's incredible. I wish my girlfriend would have cancer. <laughs> How long have you been doing stand-up comedy? Eight years. Eight years. Wow. All of it in Chicago. Nope. Chicago, LA, New York, Florida, Austin. Okay. Now you live here. Yep. What do you do for work? I'm a bartender at a pizza place. A bartender at, at a pizza, pizza place? place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a butler at a whorehouse. All right? <laughs> <laughs> I, what is <laughs> fucking... Uh, <laughs> what the fuck is a bartender at a pizza place? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a restaurant that serves pizza. Is that what it is? Correct. And in Chicago? No, it's unfortunately Detroit style. Detroit style. What do you think of that, Jim? Oh, Via? That's my favorite. I'm yeah, like a you were in trader. Detroit, right? I love Detroit. What's it like? It's like Canada's Tijuana. Yeah. <laughs> Good setup, huh? Good setup. Dave, like Kobe and Shaq over here. It's fucking on. awesome. Anyway, back to this Jersey Shore reject. Well, I didn't know the Proud Boys like had caddies. But, um, I like how honest you are. I like, you know, obviously I don't have no idea if your girlfriend is okay with this kind of humor. I don't know if any of it's real. It sounds like it's real. But the fact that you would 
have a chunk like that that's so personal, uh, I think is awesome. And you seem to have a good attitude about it, so hopefully you do too, as she does too. And yeah. That's awesome. Thank you, man. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Laughter is the best medicine, unless you have cancer. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, classic. what do you guys do for fun? You and the lady. When um, I mean, she's uh, uh, she's not all that fun. <laughs> so. A lot of time in bed. This one. Uh, <laughs> I do this. I play water polo. It's so weird. I know. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> wow. Other than water polo, what else? Um, uh, watch a lot of movies. Okay. Water right. polo in a town suffering a drought. Well, you know something, son? That's privilege. <laughs> that is privilege. <laughs> What's water polo like? Just you and the guys getting in your, like, Speedos? Little and tiny things. Knocking a little ball around? Like, <laughs> what happens? It's pretty homoerotic. There's a lot of grabbing each other under the water and little Speedos and... I mean, the players out here aren't that good. D, so. D Madness, famously homophobic, is behind us <laughs> groaning. Groaning and groaning at the thought of men grabbing each other underwater. He cannot help himself. At least he's visualizing it. That doesn't, doesn't really... Oh, cancer's okay, it. but blindness. Well, I mean, D Man- Madness can't get bigger eye implants after it's, <laughs> it's kind of not fair. Uh, Zach Laboza, fun stuff, man. Zach, great um, job. Yeah. Strong it, stuff. Anything else for Zach? I think he's doing the right thing, man. Okay. Yeah. Here you go. Here's a big joke book. There goes Zach Laboza, everybody. Zach, buddy, good one. All right. We're. So we're running over time here, but we're going to get one last bucket pull up here. Is that oh cool? Oh, my God. Hold on. Let's meet them all hold together. On. Hold some... on. Hold on. Can yeah. it get sadder? That's what I want to know. Well, we're about to find out. I don't know if we're picking a new mascot or what the fuck's going on up here. <laughs> but okay. The, we got the... one more. Is that what you're saying? Huh? Tony, one yeah. more? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, yeah. Make I some mean, noise. Great. For Miles Joyner, everybody. Miles Miles Joyner. Come on, people. Put your hands together for him. These guys have been waiting all night in an alleyway for the opportunity. How's it going? What's up, buddy? Good to be here in Austin. I was just here the other fucking day. And I'm here again. It was for a job interview that didn't go well. It's because an Indian guy messed the whole fucking thing up uh, halfway across the world. But um, I actually moved to Texas because a girl made me do it. Um, she's actually cheating on me with my best friend the entire time. And it was crazy because I was like, why y'all didn't tell me? Y'all could have told me the entire fucking time. We could have split everything in threes, goddammit. <laughs> I mean, I would have shared anything with Joe. I would have gave him the shirt off my back. The last hit of my weed. But um, yeah, he did that. And so... Um, <clears throat> Punchline. <laughs> right there. Um, like I said, it's good to be here in Austin. I kind of want to move here because um, I'm, I'm in Dallas right now. So I kind of want to move to Austin. And uh, I'm just so happy to be here. Thank you. My name is Miles Joyner. Thank Miles, Miles. Joyner, a very, very interesting approach. Uh, just saying Thank the so word much, Tony, pun- uh, Oh, okie doke. Oh, 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 you're still talking. Okie dokie. All right. Awesome. This is going to be a great interview. Uh, Miles, doing an interesting uh, method, saying the word punchline instead of having it. I like that. Very, very interesting. That happened. Deconstructing comedy. I like that. D Madness has his hands over his ears. Can't stand the sight of me. They, sorry. <laughs> okay, Miles, still bombing deep into the interview part. Uh, no, Tony, it's yeah. hard going on at the end. I'll tell you that as a guy who closes as many a show. It's very mm-hmm. tough, Miles. It really is. Have yeah. you ever considered tap dancing? <laughs> wow. Too much, Ta- Tony. You mean tapping back into my roots? <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, 
there. Miles, what do you? How long have you been doing stand up? This that is was, my first time. Okay, no that's way. Good. Really? This is wow. Yeah. First yeah. Time. Fuck, man. Awesome. Congratulations. Wow. It's an honor to meet you. It's an honor to meet you, Jeff. Dave. Yeah. What about me? Yeah, of course. Let's oh, go, go another one. Honor to meet All you right. too, Sideshow Bob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yeah, you. I uh, admire anybody who comes out here and, like Dave said, and close it up like that. It's difficult. Yeah. It's very difficult. That was really a, hard. But uh, otherwise, nothing really constructive coming out of it. <laughs> no, people brought out. people brought their A game, and he had to follow it. Like when that guy Tito did that impression of Aaron. You know, I thought that was. <laughs> <laughs> Is this something you've always wanted to try, Miles? Yeah, uh, I started. When when uh when 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 my I found out that my girlfriend cheated on me, I was actually in the middle of binging Louie, and I started writing jokes at that point. Sweet. Okay, so th- it really broke your heart. Uh yeah. How long were you with that girl for? Uh, two years. Two, How long w- were you good friends with the best friend that? T- God, same amount of time. Uh huh. Yeah. And then how did you catch them? The girl, well, so I I kind of knew, but then the girl told they the girl that was with Jesus the guy Jesus fucking Christ Miles Oh my god The girl that, the girl that was with the guy It's she, your story bro fucking say it All right this is what actually what happened The I, girl the girl This is actually what happened this is actually what happened I, I I did shrooms one night I went to the It'll Do Club in Dallas and I like heard this song by Captain Beefheart and I was like I fucking love that bitch still and I called her and then she didn't pick up and then she called me the next morning and she was like Hey, I saw I got your messages, but I just, I fucked Joe. Wait, wait, wait. You guys were broken up? We were already broken up. She was gonna, she was gonna meet me in Dallas, but it never happened. So she, she never didn't came out. cheat on you. You guys broke no, up. No, 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 Michael. We were, we were, we were, we were, we were, we were, we were together. We were, we were together. We were together. And, and then we, when I got to Dallas, she was supposed to come out, and then we, she, she was cheating with Joe the entire fucking time. We, we know. We know. Somehow we knew this before you. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> what a... F- we, okay. I think it's good that you're working it out with us. I do. I do. You I do. Tired. You know what I want to do? You look like the first guy that would shoot up a weed store. <laughs> Where does Joe live? Uh, now he lives in New York. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fly Joe here. I want to see if he does a better minute than you. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, that's what she said. <laughs> I, that's literally what she said. Thank God. Thank God you showed up, Jeff. Holy shit, that poor kid. He's got a broken heart, for God's sakes. Give him a chance. Miles, we're going to move quickly with you. Thank Here's you. a little joke book. There he goes. Miles, <laughs> Miles Joiner, everybody. Miles, I'm sorry. It's right over here. Joe would have caught that, by the way. Joe would have caught that joke Miles. book. Job, All right. In job. our mishandling of the show, I have realized that all night long we did not have the opportunity to get a female comedian up here. We accidentally <laughs> missed all the females last week. We did not pull one out of the bucket. So we pulled one out for right now to make things a little even. You guys ready for Yeah. yeah. Make some noise for Kylie Kaiser, everybody. The last bucket pull of the night. One minute, uninterrupted. Kylie Kaiser. Thank you. I really hate all the dumb shit that people try to tell you to make you feel better about being single, you know? When my long-term relationship ended, my friends were like, Kylie, this is going to be great for you, you know? It's going to be an opportunity for an eat, pray, love kind of moment. I got to be honest with you guys, it's looked a little bit less eat, pray, love, a little bit more drink, cry, fuck. (laughs) I was seeing somebody recently and I kind of thought it was going well until he called me something so offensive that I haven't really been able to move on from it. He called me his little buddy. (laughs) Yeah, I've been friend zoned before but never while there was still a dick inside of me. You know, like this is essentially the verbal equivalent of a guy finishing rolling off of you and then putting you into a headlock and giving you a noogie. My friends tell me that my issue is I'm really bad at being able to identify red flags, but I don't think that's true. I think red flags are about perspective. For example, what you think is a red flag, I may not. My best friend thinks that military men are a red flag. But my mom's been married to four of them, so I think it's fine. Kylie Kaiser. Strong 
Strong great, way to end the show. Great Memorial strong, Day joke. Strong Kylie. way to end the show. Thank you. A little Memorial Day humor there. Very strong set, Kylie Kaiser. How long have you been Thank doing you. stand-up? So I've been writing for almost a year, but I've been performing for four months. Four months. Yes. All of it here in Austin, Texas? All of it in Austin. I was writing in Nashville. I did like a comedy class there before I moved. Okay. You moved from Nashville to here. I did. What do you do for a living? Oh, come on. It's Ooh. obvious. She runs an axe-throwing place. Come <laughs> on. What makes you say that? Do I look strong? I don't know. Okay, so ironically... <laughs> I arm was impressed. Dave, come on, arm wrestle right I now. was impressed from beginning to end, and I would like you to do a guest spot on Wednesday night at my show. Wow. Okay. Wednesday night, sold out show. Wow. Four months into the game. Wow. Doing a spot. Thank you so much. Um, my day job, I used to run a health and fitness coaching company, and I just wasn't passionate anymore, so now I do freelance copywriting for other fitness professionals. I like write their Instagram content. Incredible. You're like a health and fitness. Are you like catfishing these people? <laughs> no. So I used to be a competitive bodybuilder. I was a bikini girl and I just like kind of got sick of not being able to live my life. And so I put on a little weight, but I have a lot more fun. Yeah, absolutely. You absolutely. won the crowd over. Yeah. Very cool. What else? What else do you do for fun? Um, I clearly miss out on red flags a lot. I do a lot of bad dating. Um, I like to go to concerts. Um, Otherwise, yeah. lately, it's just been stand-up. I'm really having a blast doing this. Good. When you say you miss out on red flags, what exactly do you mean? Um, so the long-term relationship I got out of was a five-year one right before I moved here. Um, he was kind of just like a walking red flag. I, there was a lot of things you could pick apart. But then once I, uh, right before I moved, I was dating a drug addict. Mm. Yeah. He's, he's sober In now, this town? <laughs> Can I keep In that? this town, that's impossible. He was still in Nashville. It was long distance drug addict. So oh. that was, you know, really good. Wow. Long wow. distance drug yeah. addict. Wow. Absolutely incredible. Never heard of that before. Yes. It was, you know, I learned, I have a lot of material about it, so that's good. Mm. <laughs> so you said you, uh, you used to be, yeah. So you said, so you said you used to be like a bodybuilder and uh, what, like, what, like what's, what's your food now? Guilty pleasure. What do you like? Pizza. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Would you like a pizza with a bartender? Because we have a guy. <laughs> Yawn. Sorry. Go ahead, Tony. What do you? Kylie have to say? Kaiser. I love it. <laughs> Welcome to Kill Tony Universe. You did it. Yes. You had a great you so set. You're Definitely leaving here Wednesday with a big night. joke book. We got rid of here. all the big joke here, books yeah. tonight. It's been a while. I'm gonna get the names from Tony, but yeah, Wednesday night for sure. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. This is awesome. How about one more time for Kylie Kaiser, everybody? Indeed, there she goes. Well, well, well. Did you guys have fun tonight? And you know, we could end it now, and I would say that that's uh, uh, just an unbelievable episode. But instead. There's only one way to put a ribbon on a show like this. The man you are about to lie your eyes on has the record for most sets ever in the history of the show, most interviews ever in the history of the show, the longest length of time being a full-time member of the show. He's headlining all around the country. He's featuring for all your favorite comedians. Ladies and gentlemen, the Memphis Strangler, the Big Red Machine, the Vanilla Gorilla. This is William Montgomery. Since it's Memorial Day, I'd like it if we could observe a moment of silence for Red Band's mom. Um, <laughs> She got another cameo from me last night begging to move in, and I had to tell her, I'm already with somebody. This ain't gonna work out, bitch. <laughs> this Memorial Day weekend has been kind of strange for me on cameo. My favorite was I asked a girl to marry a guy. The worst was I told a dog he was being put down. <laughs> You're about to fucking die, Ralph. Earlier today, during a press conference, when Biden was asked about Memorial Day, he responded, wait, who are you? Where am I? What are all these tap dancers doing in here? Woo! Woo! 
<laughs> NBA All-Star Ja Morant has been suspended twice from the league for flashing guns in YouTube videos. And this past week, he was posting ominous tweets, so they performed a welfare check. Shit, if Ja posts another gun video, a welfare check's going to be how he gets paid. <laughs> It's another tap dancer joke. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, that's my time. Wow. What a force. Every single week for over five years. Unbelievable. You did it again. William Montgomery, how do you feel? You're in front of two of the greats, Dave Attell and Jeffrey Ross. It's very nice to see y'all. Have either one of you ever had a sciatic nerve problem? I had a horrible one last year, and I swear to God, I was reaching down to pick up my two-pound dog a couple of days. Oh, is that funny, dumbass? <laughs> Trying to have fun up in it, I bet! <laughs> but yeah, I was leaning down to pick up uh, the sweet little dog, and I busted my sciatic nerve again somehow, so now it's literally killing me. What do I do? You gotta stretch it out a little half pigeon pose. Yep. Just stretch it out. Yeah, go to, okay. go to, go to, have Tony take you to yoga. That's true. You won't be okay. so pale as well. It'll be good for you. <laughs> Get a little blood to that fucking dome of yours. <laughs> <laughs> Might be able to memorize your jokes. I know. I don't know if that's ever going to happen, Tony. Yeah. It should. I should, but... <laughs> You'll be the real big red machine then. Yeah. What else is going on, Billy Boy? I went to a Dallas-Vegas uh, hockey game this past Tuesday, and I got... Vegas once tonight. I don't really care, but I guess I'm pulling for Vegas. They won tonight. I saw your jersey. But yeah, I was sitting right up. Uh, I got tickets right up at the front by the penalty box, which was wonderful. But at one point in time, a water bottle, probably three-fourths of the way filled up, rocketed less than a foot away from my head and hit the glass with just such violence I'm just happy it didn't hit my head, and I swear to God, I'm never going to go to fucking piece of shit Dallas ever again. I mean, those fans, there's a bunch of fucking losers wow. over there. Like, I had a really good time at the game, but I swear to God, if that fucking bottle had smashed into the back of my head, I would have pulled out the fucking gun I had snuck into the arena Whoa. and just started blasting. Jeez. Wow. He really yeah, I swear to God, I would have killed people that night if that hit the back of my head. That was, that was less joke, more fatwa. I mean, honestly. Yeah, I'm going to wage a holy war on that motherfucker if a bottle hits my head. Wow. I mean, where do I even begin? Did you see the guy that threw the water bottle? Perhaps it was a woman? Who I didn't see. I immediately did my hat off and did my hands in the air and was fucking yelling, and I couldn't tell. What people, were you yelling? Can you show the people? Who the fuck just threw that bottle? <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Y'all don't have to play the fucking music. I was like, literally, who the fuck tried to hit me in the head with this fucking Aquafina bottle tonight? I can't help in the fucking Vegas Knights are beating that ass. But seriously, you threw the fucking bottle. <laughs> and then nobody stood up. Nobody raised their fucking hands in there. There was a bunch of pussies up in Dallas. I fucking can't stand Dallas anymore, dude. Tell us more about what you hate about Dallas. Go, 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 go. Feel free to just rant about your hatred There's a bunch of Native Americans there, weirdly enough. <laughs> and normally, I swear to God, I like some Sioux. I like some Arapahoes. Holy shit. Shit, I like some Apaches, but I swear to God, I don't know what kind of Native Americans they got running around all over Dallas. Hey, this is in the Yellowstone audition, all right? So relax. <laughs> well, one of them killed my aunt a couple years ago. I swear to God, that one guy got his legs cut off. He literally, my aunt, literally, I think I've talked about it before, she literally got cut in half by a train. And it was some piece of shit, like Shoptaw. I think it was a Shoptaw Indian. I think that's... What's all running around in Dallas? So, Tony, you can pay shit. me to fucking go Tony, can you give this guy a blanket and get him out of here? I mean, honestly. <laughs> taking on the Choctaw? Good luck. What's the matter, Dave? Yeah, what's the matter? Yeah. <laughs> what? What's the matter? Nothing, buddy. How many times have you been tasered? 
That's what I want to know. <laughs> Twice, weirdly enough, one at a Indian reservation. I was fucking raising hell. Uh, how much does it cost on Cameo? That's what I want to know. How much does it cost on Cameo? Like, what's your Cameo rate? I want to know that. He's, well, I was he, doing so many. Thank you, seriously, from the bottom of my heart. If anybody's got one, I genuinely appreciate it. I'm charging, I think, $275 right no now. No way. I have, I have 65 Good in the for queue. You, so, buddy. yeah, it's like life-changing money. So I greatly appreciate it. I swear to God, first thing I'm going to do is go down to fucking Tallahassee to that fucking... <laughs> <laughs> casino run by those fucking Indians down whoa, there. Whoa, whoa. Save it for Columbus Day. Come on. Holy shit. <laughs> Buddy, you're letting all the great ones go. Just leave <clears throat> Just leave Chumash June 23rd whoa. out of this. Okay. Yeah. I guess we see who's throwing his hat in the ring for 2024. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hold on. What do you mean save it for Columbus Day? What is... I'll, whatever can de-escalate the moment. I don't know. <laughs> Listen, you're a young Harkonnen, and I know you came in here tonight. The fans love you. The band loves you. They know just when to pop with you. How do you, how do you after the show, how do you decompress from this kind of entertainment? What do you do, Bunny? I'll be honest. I will probably end up, end up going to Mitzi's, and I will sit behind Tony and just be tapping him on the shoulder, just being like, Tony, how'd it go tonight? And I don't see that at all. a lot of the time, all. he refuses to look back at me, and it puts my anxiety on all. total edge. I no, see. I'm kidding. I don't know. Yeah, I stopped drinking, so I'll drink, I don't know what, six or seven soda waters with limes. I see a guy throwing puppies off a bridge. I mean, really. You do have a new sweet little dog. Uh, how's the dog doing? <laughs> It is a very... It's going. <laughs> she's doing really good. Um, yeah, she's doing super good. I literally did hurt my back, though, picking her up the other day, so... You know, a lot of people uh, heard the episode in which you played your new debut song, Sweet Little Dog, and... Uh, We've been getting reports that it's in uh, a lot of people's heads. It's considered very, very catchy. It is true. <laughs> it is true that I love my sweet little dog, even though she screwed my back up on Sunday. I literally was hunched over for three fucking hours trying to pick her up, but I couldn't. All right. He, he doesn't remember the words to his own hit song. <laughs> you want we need, need, to... Wow. Have, you bought a sweet little dog yesterday, yesterday. Woo! Yeah, it's been like a month and a half now. Right. It has. I know. I can... <laughs> See, it was going all right. Now I'm going to be horrified when I walk off this day. Why are you laughing, you dumbass? Red Band. Getting Fucking his revenge. idiot! <laughs> Seriously, why is that so funny, Red Band? Oh, here yeah, you don't. I don't even remember your hit song, man. Yeah, and it has like six words. <laughs> I bought a sweet little oh, dog, dog yesterday. 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 Okay, well let me try. All okay. right, one, two, one, two. I bought a sweet little dog. Yesterday, no, slow it it's, down a little, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. I bought a sweet little dog yesterday. No, I'm kidding. A month and a half ago. Hey, the remix. Remix. <laughs> uh, William Montgomery, a goddamn rock star, through whoa. and through, again and again and again and again. Make some noise one more time for William Montgomery. <laughs> Jeffrey Ross, Portland, August 4th and 5th. Detroit, September 29th. And the Boston Wilbur Theater, September 30th. Both of them bumping mics, June 23rd in Santa Anis. How loud can this place get for David Tell and Jeff Ross? <laughs> Yeah. 
Thank you to the Red Rose, the Yellow Rose, Austin Security Guard Service, Gel Blaster, Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey. Check out John D's website, J-O-N-D-E-A-S.com, John D's.com. Make sure you get tickets to the live stream of the 10-year anniversary, moment.co slash Kiltony. You can watch the 10-year anniversary live Saturday, June 10th at 8 p.m. It's going to be a big, crazy show, massive surprises, massive announcements. The new merch store, killmerch.com, is thriving. The things that are sold out are being refilled immediately. Tony. A exclusive brand new Kill Tony merch in the lobby on your way out. Jeff Ross. Can we wrap this up? Dave has to get back to the bridge before the bats fly home. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, Thank you for having me, buddy. Of course. Thanks for I having so us, much Tony. Fun. Thank you. Thank to you, you and for all your comics. God bless. Every one of them. Super cool. Thanks yeah. for having me. He Tony. didn't need to be here, and he showed up. Mix one more time for David Tell, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. And one more time for one of my all-time best friends that changed my life, Jeff Ross, everyone. <laughs> Chris Rogers made a piece of art while we did this. It's Michael Gonzalez. Look at that. The drawing from Ryan J. Ebelt is in of tonight's episode. Dave Attell and Jeff Ross. That is... Okay, find it. We're going to find it. That's up on the screen right now on YouTube. Uh, check out my new comedy club, The Sunset yep. Strip, sunsetstripatx.com. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thanks. We love you guys. Thank you. Good night. Yes. And one, one more time for the best damn man in the land, Michael Gonzalez, Paul Deemer, D Madness, John Dees, and Matthew Muling, everybody. Thank you so much. Good night. We love you. Thank you. Merch store is up and running at a thousand miles an hour. It is our official Kill Tony online shop. 
killmerch.com. T-shirts, hoodies, bonsai made real Texas leather joke books, kill Tony hats, kill Tony knit winter hats, beer koozies, bandanas, trucker hats, McVader made posters, some Ryan J. Ebelt art coming in soon, and kill Tony stickers come with a lot of the purchases that you make. I personally love the Kill Tony NASCAR shirt, the Kill Tony hoodie with the established 2013 along the sleeve. Super cool stuff. We tested all of this out ourselves and made sure that it's very high quality. There's cool a cool KT tag on it with a knife and the logo on everything. Anyway, go to killmerch.com. You know what to do. Support the show. Buy some stuff. Look cool. Tell your friends. You know what's up.